Uh, we live? Aziz, live. Uh, we live? Aziz. Fantastic. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's continue spamming, spamming out some bio labs. Why not? Sergeant Todd, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You're early, only by a couple of minutes at most. Does that count? I think I was a couple of minutes uh, late yesterday, actually. Uh, are we out of biomatter in here? We are. I don't know if I've actually requested it or anything. Nope, I have. Should... No. I think I need to bump this up. And now it should be on its way pretty soon. But I can always just go steal some to get it started. Let's do that. By 90 seconds, I wasn't ready with my messages. <laughs> Thwarted. Is this balanced? Um, it should be. Hmm. One, two, th uh, one, two, one, two. Perfect. I think that only gets us, like, one machine per stack, though, right? No, half of that. We need two stacks of biomatter to supply one machine. How did all that science fluid go last night? Did you find a good build with all the pipes? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I mean, if I were to redesign the whole thing from scratch, we could certainly make a few improvements, but for a patch, um, it worked out pretty well, really. We've got um, a surprising throughput of bio sludge. Uh, sorry, well, bio sludge, yes, and biomass, considering that we're not getting we're not really getting bio sludge from any well i was gonna say we're not getting bio sludge from an external source and then it happened uh so there's that that'll speed things up a bit twisty p good morning welcome welcome hope you're doing well wow it's it's pretty big isn't it <laughs> Um, but yeah, suffice to say, we've got some momentum now with, uh, bioscience. I did quadruple our, or I haven't quite finished, but I'm working on quadrupling our biomatter builds, um, to bring in additional biomass to the loops. And did we get some more down here? What do we got? Zero. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Um, did I stop requesting it or something? Yeah, I think I right-clicked it here, but not over here? Yeah, we're still looking for bio labs. How many do we have? 16, and we need, like, 46 or something. 42. I should probably just wait for that build to get finished. Okay. Um, so what's next? Petrie Cottontail. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And... Well, this is... The next step, I think, is something I've been putting off for just a little while. Uh, we need to do... We need to do the catalog build and the science build, which is just a copy paste edit. Good day, good day to you as well. All right, let's jump into the editor and grab one of our blueprints. Which, come to think of it, I'm pretty sure they've been updated. Um. So 
So I think I'll just quickly grab material. As, uh, this one especially, I'm pretty sure there's some little updates I've forgotten about. How long until we get the advanced um, research servers? Too long, I suspect. We need everything at tier 3. Three except for Astro. So we need Bio 3. But I want to build the advanced research servers now. Alright. Just in case there's been any change, let's copy paste this. Uh, don't forget the tiles and train stop names. Grab catalogs. Put that down here for the moment, jump back into the editor, and carefully put it down here, and here, and now we just need to go through and update all these to bio, whoops. And this will be catalog two. Should be already done. Okay. Now we change these to catalog one recipe. Catalog two recipe. Missed one. Let's just uh, rate calc this and make sure. Doesn't look like we missed any. Um, is it still going to use the same thermo fluid? Negative 125, negative 125. Fantastic. All right, so this part right here isn't going to change. Uh, what we do need is biocombustion, biomechanical. Well, we should find all of these right here in order. Biocombustion, biomechanical. Uh, biochemical, and genetic data. That looks right. And then we need to update the station name. Uh, and this will be the next four up here. I think. Experimental genetic, biochem resistance and biomechanical resistance. And we'll just double check that. Beautiful. Uh, that just leaves station names. We're dropping off this one, this one, this one, and this one to make catalog one. And Five, six, seven, eight makes catalog two. Cool, cool, cool. That should be it. Um, let's blueprint. And this is going to be bio catalog one and two. Snap to grid. 86251 Bio catalog one and two. Filters on the unloader. God damn it. Thank you. Alright, so left to right here, I think. That one's backward. It really doesn't matter. I think I'll do it this way. Number one, number two, number three, number four, and then over here we need biocombustion, uh, 
We'll start here. Bio combustion resistance. Bio combustion. Wait, what? Oh, experimental genetic. Bio combust uh, chemical resistance and bio mechanical resistance. I believe that is correct. Fantastic. Alright, let's try that again. Uh, catalog 1 and 2. Bio catalog 1 and 2. Fantastic. And I think that's it. Let's put it down here somewhere. And figure out where we want to build it. So those cards are going to be picked up here, 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 and here. And I was probably muted the entire time. Bat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope your neighbor's dog is coughing. Oh no. My bad. Sorry to expose you to that. Why are we not placing pipes? Oh. Those are not pipes though. I think the pipes probably didn't get loaded in the train. Neighbor's dog is coughing, indeed. Oh, that's unfortunate. I wish I could set up something, it's probably possible, uh, so that I could hear my own... It's, it's probably a bit complicated, so that I could hear my own uh, voice when I'm streaming, but it doesn't double. Like, that recording isn't projected again and again and again back to the audience. That way it would be pretty difficult to be unaware that I've got the mute backwards. Uh, 
Uh, are we having electricity problems? No, it's just the Tesla coil. Okay. Seems good. Seems all right. And does this get loaded or what? Also, do we now have 50... Oh, it's already set to 50. Wait, is that why we're not getting... We're not, we're, we're not making space belt right now. Don't tell me I turned it off. No? Oh, I think we might need to make sure we request more space belt. Probably because... Yeah, once again, it's because we're requesting some over here as well. It's in buffer chests, and that gets counted toward our total. Let's just double all... 500 is a lot. Whatever, it's fine. Let's just double all of these. It's going to take a little while. Do we have steel plate? Here it comes. Here comes the steel plate. Fantastic. There's our pipes. And there's our train loaded. Okay. Try again. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that... We're going to be short a couple of units of pipe of one type or another. So we'll queue up the construction train to make another trip. Depending on your setup, it's really easy to set that up. Fantastic. Yeah, um... With a video, I always set the sources to be, like, specifically the game, because I don't want to, like... Make some mistake and show random stuff on my desktop or something um but with audio it's just like you hear whatever i hear but presumably i could probably set that up differently philip b good to see you again welcome welcome hope you're doing well can't remember specifics but i believe some streamers have mute tied to a brb screen or have a hud toggle alerting them and the chat to the mute i i i use the mute way too much um for that to make sense. Um, uh, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I've ha I've got like minor lung problems that I've had for decades, basically. Without even being a smoker. It's because other people around me were smokers. I'll be in line. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm kind of not surprised at all, but it's underground pipe. That's the reason we can't finish this in one go. Maybe I should get the construction train to carry more. If it carried one more stack, which, uh... I don't know, we might... I think we, I think we do have room for here. If we carried one more stack of space pipe, um, that would have got done in one. Wouldn't it be better to upgrade the modules in the mall to something better than level 3. They're bottlenecked, even though we have two superior inserters, um, shoveling things from this big container into each, uh, see that? See that red? It's actually bottlenecked on the inserters for, for like, most recipes, probably. Uh, although space transport belt is unusually slow. How can T-Hax have issues for decades when he's 17 years old? Do I sound 17 to you? I know for most of my life I've looked younger than I am, but... Uh, that, that seems like a bit much.
Alright, so this is going to be catalog uno. Catalog dos. Subrashi. And I think that's our build. What? Auto save. Good grief, it takes a little while to get... No, I think I remember the first save of the day taking a little, little bit longer to get started, now that I think of it. So it's not that severe. Yet. It would help if when we did trim surface on certain planets, it didn't arbitrarily leave a significant chunk of it not trimmed. So why aren't these getting delivered? I thought we had some of these data cards filled already, but apparently I'm completely wrong. Genetic data. I would have been not surprised at all to see genetic data saturated, but uh, we kind of forgot to output... No, we didn't. Contaminated cosmic water. Oh, I think I see the problem. I think I see the problem. But yeah, uh, genetic data is pretty easy. Relatively easy to come by. But also, it got delivered up here as well. But yeah, we should have at least one um, train delivery going to make catalogs quite soon. We are pretty close to one train load for the first two builds here. This one's like halfway, actually. Same with this one. I also look much younger, so I started to grow a beard. <laughs> Indeed. I've got a bit too much of a beard right now myself. Should probably trim it. Oh, oh, there's our tier two uh, experimental biomass, but not biomechanical, which is biomass, biomass, biomass. Everything is craving biomass of one form or another, which has stopped moving for some reason. What happened to the biomass? It's spice. We've actually run out of spice. Uh, which means I guess we're not bottlenecked on bio sludge, at least for now. Okay, how is spice look? How fast would spice have to be if, uh, if this was to go fast? It's only 13.6 per second, but what do we actually have? Let's see. If we were doing spice and only spice uh, from this build, that's 32 per second. Net rate... <laughs> net rate is actually negative. Um... Oh, I remember this. I tried to... I tried to come up with something to balance spice and extract. And it didn't work out so well. Hmm. Because we need the spice to make any extract. And it actually takes 10 spice to make one... Uh, sorry, 3 to 7... So like 5 on average. 10 spice makes 5 extract, so it's 1 to 2, but the stack size is 4 times as big. I kind of want to... I think I might prioritize spice and just try and saturate it, rather than balance it. See how that goes. A 
Otherwise, I could swap the wire colors on one of these sets. And then we could easily compare the two. Oh, or I could just, like, connect these green wires here and do a little trickery to make sure this station understands it doesn't have spice and this station understands it doesn't have extract. Ditto for the fluids. Oh, that's right, except I wanted them to be equal in terms of stack size. That's the problem. I didn't want to use a lot of combinators for this, otherwise it would be easy. When my bio stops, it's often lack of coal. I don't think we're having any coal issues this playthrough. Not since we got, um... Oh. Uh, not since we got... what do you call it? Uh, coal filtration. Can I prod this? No, I can't. I can prod the, uh, light oil cracking down to petroleum, which I still haven't done. I could also do an update of this build with advanced chemical plants. Advanced chemical... oh my god, that's big. How much faster is it, though? Crafting speed 8 versus 1, so... Literally one advanced chemical plant could do the job of this row of regular chemical plants. Um, in my case, it's just ignorance as I haven't properly automated its delivery to orbit. Indeed. It's got to be something. Never too much beard. <laughs> It, there's too much beard if it's itchy, that's that's for sure. Now we've got coal here that's not being picked up, so I don't think we're having problems with that. Uh, let's check in space. Actually, doesn't... where does coal go into Vitamelange? Does coal go into Vitamelange? With K2? Uh, I think it's fertilizer or something, right? Nope, that's, uh... That's biomatter. Where did we use coal? I remember coal. Oh, it is in space, right? Up here somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. How fast would this eat coal? 40 per second? 43. It's not that much. And this doesn't actually go full speed very often. What is this wire doing? Who said you could have random extra connections that look tacky? Like this one. Well, that's not that random, but still. That's starting to look a bit better. Now, if only we could move this up a couple of tiles. It'll have to do. Um, what should we focus on now? Well, we could go ahead and build the uh, science for bio. Probably put it right about here. Um, I'll grab the blueprint for... Let's see... Material science? Even if there's something that we want to update in this blueprint, the uh, scaffolding should be the same. So let's go build that. And I think I will copy-paste, say, energy science, make an edit. This is just going to go here temporarily. Alright, jump into the editor once more. You know what? Let me 
make sure we clear all those. And space. And then grab our blueprint. I love these uh, toggleable scroll wheels on some mice, where you can freewheel it. Although I have kind of broken-ish one because I played with it too much in the past. Don't do that. Is that right? Oh, I didn't include the... No! Hmm. I could once again steal from material science to get the scaffolding. And then paste this in. Whoops. Fantastic. Alright, so this is going to be Bio 1, Bio 2, Bio 3, and Bio 4. Um, I'm going to set this to negative 200 for each, so we make one stack of each type of bioscience. We may crank this up a lot in the future. But for now, we want to keep it kind of balanced, even if it wastes a few train trips. And figure out what we need. Sig data is not going to change. Thermo fluid is not going to change. Um, energy insight becomes bio insight. Energy catalog becomes bio catalog. Holmium plate becomes vitamelange extract, but it has a different stack size. So what's this? 7.5. That's one and a half train loads. Is 30,000. That might be more than we need. Considering we're only consuming four per second, I think we can maybe say 200, 100 plus two and a half thousand, just like we had before, an extra two and a half thousand. Should be fine. Don't have the better machines yet? No, they're behind Bio 3. There's too much nice stuff behind bio. Um, like stuff that you want to use... Uh, the, the advanced chemical plant is like the obvious example. Stuff that you want to use to design bio is behind bio. That's 75 stacks. Oh, 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 we're using short trains. Oh. Uh... Yeah, so what was this set to? 7.5k? For a stack size of 100? Is 75 stacks. We want 75 stacks of 200. As in 15k. I don't... It's still going to have a lot of extra... But I don't really care. Um, so this station is requesting extract uh, catalog one sig data insight and there was something else. There was not something else. The cool thermo fluid. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, excuse me. And cool thermo fluid? 
um, goes into research server. And out comes Bioscience 1. And then we do the same thing for all these. It's a little bit tedious, which is why I've been putting it off. Um, instead of Holmium Cable... Oh, we need to do the filters as well. So this is Extract. Uh, this is Catalog 1. This is Still Sig Data, and this is Bio Insight. Um, and then we need to put a filter here for Bio 1. And then this thing doesn't need to change because it's set filters blacklist. That's a small mercy. Cool, cool, cool. I'm glad I set that up to be a little bit simpler at least. This will be Bio 2. This will be Bio 3. And this will be Bio 4. And then... And then, and then, and then... Uh, what do we need here? Bio Scrubber instead of... Holmium Cable. Uh, stacks to the same size, so we want to steal this number. And these are the only things we need to request here, because all the common stuff is from this station. So that at least won't be as much work. This will be Bio 2. Which comes from Catalog 2 and Scrubber. Catalog 2. Fantastic. It'll be a little easier to edit from there. MyClap, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That looks good. We don't need any fluids except here for the drop offs. Uh, and then we need catalog 3. Um, and what goes in here instead of Holmium Solenoid? Also, did I update catalog 2 filter? I did not. Catalog 2? I just realized this is the last time we're going to have to do this. Unless we end up copying the same layout for... Deep Space Science. But that's a while off anyway. It's at worst uh, the last time we have to do this for a while. Wait, I thought alt filters showed filters on loaders? I just haven't updated in a while. I don't like to update during a really long playthrough in case something breaks or something. And I, I could do a backup, um, but I just haven't bothered yet. Okay, um, that looks good. This needs to be Vitalic Reagent, same stack size. Fantastic. So this one's asking for Reagent, Catalog 3, and Outcomes... Science pack three. Beautiful. Und also. Uh, instead of quantum processor. Wait, did I do that filter? Nope. Vitalic reagent. And comprehensive catalog. Fantastic. All right, so this will be extended bio catalog, and this one, drumroll, Vitam Lange core fragment. I 
have to admit, I wasn't expecting that. I also wasn't expecting two resources other than Catalog 4 and the common stuff. And the previous tier. Um, so that might, that that actually means we need to make an exception. Uh, we need one more belt. Or we need like a perfect sushi setup. It's 10 to 1 epoxy to core fragments. It's not a lot of core fragments. Let's see. At least if something breaks, it isn't your fault. Does it matter? Um... Um, 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 I'm just trying to think of the least that I have to do to make this work, especially because I want it to work uh, when we replace these with advanced research. So all this weird looking extra pipe spaghetti around the sides and like belts going in. The reason it looks like this is I'm leaving room to put in an advanced research service. So I want it to work once we do that. Um, it looks like it shouldn't be too difficult. So the inside belt is the common items belt. The... Uh, the insights and sig data, which is going to take from that with an inserter. And it shouldn't be a problem to just have a long arm right here to take from these. And what would our rate be? Well, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be super slow anyway. Hmm. I think I'll just put core fragments here. What is that extra little bit of... Well, how am I gonna spaghetti it into place for the moment, though, is the question. I'd like it to just go here when we get to the point where we're upgrading. That should be easy enough to update, I guess. Alright, so that's going to be Core Fragment Vitamelange. And do we have room here? I'm sure we do. 1.5, 75 stacks times 2 is 150, that's only half, out of 300, and we've got 320. Big, cool, good morning, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Alright, what was the other thing? Epoxy, Vitalic Epoxy, stack size 50, perfect. No, 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 no. Uh, Vitalic epoxy goes here, if we're following the familiar pattern. And this one should be catalog four. And then... Vitamelange core fragment, which, uh, now that I think about it... What's 20 times 75? 1500. I probably could have done that in my head. So 75 times 3, just to double check, is 255, 225 stacks. We've got way more than enough space in the bulk rail unloader. That should be fine. I just realized um, by the time we get by the time we're building Bioscience 4, we'll be able to replace this, but whatever. It's a fine. In fact, why don't I just get rid of this uh, little bit of 
temporary mess, and I'll just leave that there for the moment. Okay, don't need any fluids. That's looking good. That one's fine, actually. Did we update the names? Didn't update this one yet. So it's going to be external catalog, epoxy on both your houses, vitamelange core fragment, and out comes bio4. Fantastic. Looks good. Um, and I need to do the output station names. Provider for Bio 1. Two. Three. And four. Did I name that number four? Yeah, I did. Yes, indeed. And this will be bio two. Very, very neat. And this one shouldn't need to be changed. It, I didn't copy the station name, though. Uh, what are we picking up? Junk data cards, and I believe it's 25 degree thermofluid. Cool, cool, cool. Junk data card... 25. Active pickup, because if that gets full, everything stops. And long trains only. And we'll do it this way. That seems fine. That seems fine. Alright. I think that's our build. Oh, did I do all the filters? I didn't do epoxy. Epoxy. Seems good. Seems good. Seems good. And seems good. Beautiful. Bellissimo. And I don't think we have any test inputs. Um, we're going to call this 1, 2, 3, and 4. Bioscience. Snap 2. Not that I ever rotate, but I like to leave the option. Very, very nice. And then put it down next to this guy. Cool. Shading doesn't look that good when you zoom out that much. Uh, Alright, so I wanted to build this. I'm thinking catalog 3 and 4 can go here. Oh yeah, I already, I already decided where we're building this. Fantastic. Let's bring our construction train into it, which is fully loaded. Inactivity in seconds. We might be able to get that done in one go. I don't think the construction train is carrying flat solar panels, though. So we'll wait for inactivity over here. Trains are already on the way. It is probably thermofluid, um, significant data, and possibly biological insight, but I don't think so. Yeah, we don't have bio insight right now. Ooh, we can already upgrade this to tier 3, and we haven't been running it. Um, wait, no, that's that's a lie. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? 
here it is. We need to research... It's quite cheap. I should have done it. Maybe I should do it. We could do a little spaghetti research to unlock the Comprehensive Biological Insight recipe. Uh, that needs comprehensive catalogs anyway. No, let's just do this for now. Although, I would like to do that first. We need epoxy. And we need catalog. That'll unlock all those recipes. May as well do that next. AI core. Why has it got bioscience involved? Are we are we growing a brain and then hooking it up to a computer? Bankzint, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Dilka, good to see you again. Also, hi to you. Um. Okay. We have extract. Kind of funny how easily we have that, considering we're out of spice. Even knowing that I did prioritize extract. But yeah, I think prioritizing spice might be the way to go. Especially because the stack size is so much smaller. So I should probably go and do that. Um, it'll be a little bit easier to design it in person. Let's wait here. Actually, wait here out of the way of any traffic. And wait for inactivity. No. Wait for passenger president, president? and time passed. So I can get out without the train leaving. How's this going? Pretty good, actually. Looks like, uh... Looks like the ones at the back are struggling to get resources. And we haven't run out yet. Or did it just get back? N nope, we definitely didn't give it enough belt. Do I have purple belt on me? I have purple underground. Why do I have purple underground but not purple belt? Uh, let's fix that, shall we? Well, that part could actually stay blue. But let's be a little more consistent. Alright, construction train. Civil play. Um, just park here for a minute. Or not even that. And, well, considering that this is now empty, I don't think that's effectively been a bottleneck, but I would still like to fix it. We've got, like, almost... A little bit more than half the products finished here, compared to here. And now the bots are not going back inside. No! Wait, 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 wait. Which one was full? It would have been the one that we took... Belt out of. There we go. Let's make sure I have a stack of the good stuff. From now on. Okay, so... If we're going to keep these balanced... We need to basically divide... Uh, either multiply this by 4 or divide this by 4. We've already got an arithmetic sitting here. I guess if we multiply by 4, it'll be, in a sense, more precise. Output space. 
And we're going to compare that to... I could connect it here, if it reached. And if I put a negative... Don't put a request threshold, put a negative for spice. Which is four times whatever can fit in here. Uh, which is to say the maximum for... One train load of extract. Um, 20,000. So, if we say... I'll put it over here just to show it's, like, different. Unusual. Negative 20,000... Vitamolange spice. Uh, that means, at most, this thing here will receive a signal of zero vitamolange spice, uh, but it has no request threshold. So it's not gonna... It's not going to think there's Vitamolange Spice available for pickup here, and it's not going to, like, think we're requesting Vitamolange Spice here. So, if this reaches, fantastic. So now on this green wire, um, but that little red wire, by the way, the negative 20k just goes to here. So on this green wire, we've got the count of... Vitamolange extract. I just realized if we have... If we have vanilla trains coming here and just waiting and picking everything up as it's produced, we're not really going to be able to balance this, are we? So I think I'll put in some train limits. Um, and we're just going to say if extract is equal to 20,000, output one extract, because we're limiting it to exactly one train load in these two containers. Crap, I just realized we can't do it that way. It's a combined station. Oh no. I did talk about this before, that I probably shoulda, woulda, coulda, might have to make separate, separate pickup stations for, for the fluids. And this is only necessary because we've got some vanilla scheduled trains coming here. Alright, so where does this go? Unfortunately, it goes exactly where this is in the way. Actually, the, the belt would be in the way pretty much anywhere. Okay. So I think we'll go... Looks really weird. I think I like this better. If only because it's more consistent with what we usually do. Um, I could do a little underground there, but that's going to look tacky. How fast do we get light oil maximum? Very, very slowly. And I'm pretty sure methane gas is even slower. So we don't really need to worry about the shape of the pipes. Um, I'm thinking... So we don't have to mess up the look of the thing. We go up here. Can I get some steel pipe? Fantastic. Ooh. Just for the look of it. I forgot that steel underground pipe would connect to regular underground pipe. That definitely looks nicer than it might otherwise. Uh, and then we'll need to get the methane over here. Don't run me over. And this one will go here. Copy, paste, flip. 
Uh, except this is probably gonna connect somewhere else. Oh, that might work. That might work. Indeed. I think it's slightly too long for steel underground pipe. It's two tiles too long. Rude. I think we'll just use a regular pipe here. This could probably be steel, though. Which means, just for the look of it... I kind of want to... Make all of this steel. And then... I guess I could put a pump here to make believe that that's what we wanted to do all along. There we go. Oh, we kind of need to pump it from out of here anyway. So that works out. If only for the moment. Do I really not... Oh. There we go gonna say, do I really not have any more? Pumps on me? Alright, so once this is empty... Wait, where is that going? Oh, this was actually connected over here. Okay. I'd really like to get this empty sooner rather than later. Once that's empty, we can remove it. And we'll just double check. 38k, 62k, 62k, fluid system contents, oh, yeah, 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 no, that's right, looks like those are all connected, fantastic, nice, why not speed it up just a little bit more? And then we'll just do the usual high priority pickup. For these two. Um, and I'm just realizing this isn't going to reach up here. Uh, I don't really have a good excuse connection thing here. Unless I turn this into light storage tanks. Is that going to reach? It's definitely going to reach on this side. If we have light... Oh, large storage tank, rather... Right about here. If the wire reaches, I'll swap it. It does. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, we've got more than 57k already. Um, bring this one down here. Oh, that was fast. That was very fast. Wait a sec. Um, and then? And then? And then, and then, and then? Just... Go ahead and pump all of this away for a moment. Oh, 
much slower than expected. There we go. Don't waste anything. And then we'll put this around about here. Um, like that. And pump this back in. And we can comfortably have... Well, considering how slow they're going to be, I really don't think we need... Um, more than one pump per fluid wagon. But we could have double if we wanted to. Ah, uh, why not? Considering the way the fluid will flow... That might be a whole thing anyway. Alright. And... Like so. And then this will be like so. And then we call it light oil. Active provider. Might want some pumps. And this one is... Uh... Methane gas active provider. And we've gained 50k storage for it as well. Never mind you got it, indeed. E tree cottontail, blue lightning. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Need pumps for light oil. Yeah, I kind of figured someone would be commenting on that. Uh, but yeah, now we've got room for a train up here. We can remove the old storage. And now we don't have to worry that train limiting these is going to uh, prevent pickup of the fluid that we need to get rid of. Uh, we need to divide this by four. 5,000? Is that right? Stack size 50, right? Yeah, 50 times... Whoops, that's not a calculator. 50 times 100. 5k. Cool, cool, cool. Train limit is... Spice. And this is actually... This can actually be just a regular pickup. No super high priority, no fluids. Um, is the default color just all red? Just 25500? 242. It's going to bother me otherwise. Okay. And this one is just a regular pickup for spice. Set train limit to spice. I mean extract. And they should now have a train limit of zero. And that's going to kick in next time these trains leave basically. Which is not too far off. Alright, but we're multiplying Vitam Lunch Spice times 4 so that we can compare the stack sizes effectively. Uh, the number of stacks we have, rather. And we're gonna say... Hmm. What if I... Oh. I forgot this kind of implicitly prioritizes extract because the insert is... Well, if I make these stack inserters, 
and these ones fast inserters. And we know the fast inserters can keep up if the resources are there. Net rate 2. Point, oh no, 4.2 per second. 4.2 per second. This swing's 3 per swing and 864. Uh, I think it's the same. It's just a smaller stack size compared to the stack inserters. 2.4 swings per second means it can do more than 6 per second if it's direct inserted. And this way, we'll put in 12 at a time. These will pick up 6 at a time at the most. And the rest will flow down here. And then... Do we want the 50-50 or do we want to prioritize? Uh, good question. We should probably fix this input issue as well. Probably just double these two. How fast are we getting Vitamolange itself? This one's not consuming. Wait, why are core fragments not saturated? Well, they weren't for a little while. Are our spaceships okay? I'm pretty sure it's still just the one that's having issues. I wanted to put it here. And I think it'll sort itself out, actually. The other option is to make it detect which type of core fragment it has and set its anchor based on that. But that would require like 17 decider combinators on each ship. I'm definitely not doing that. Okay. What's our overall rate of Vitamolange core fragments? It's been down a bit lately. Let's say we can maintain this. 1.7k per minute. And we can process... Per minute. 2.88k. So we don't need another one of these. Um... We can get 50.688 per second in theory. This can consume 48. I don't think we're bottlenecking on this block. And I should probably stop using this one. Oh, it's using a belt there. That's just that's just making bloom with worse productivity bonuses. Um but I'm pretty sure this can consume more than this can supply. 48 per sec... Uh, 126 per second. And this can consume 160 per second. And then this can consume more than this can supply. 115 versus... 105. So we need to physically go get more Vitamolange. That's a lot of ships. Shattered into the solar system. Moss Garden, Exorion, Exorion, Moss Garden. Okay. Um, this is perpetually backed up. It seems like. Um, if we're not seeing drops in... Like, significant... Oh. We are seeing some significant drops in VIT core fragments. Which means that at least some of the stations are actually getting backed up. Do we actually still need more spaceships? I guess if we're not seeing a bunch of spaceships uh, sitting 
at the drop-offs, then the answer is probably yes. I thought we figured out that we had plenty before, but I guess that's before we started consuming lots of Vitamelange. So let's make some more. Could you do a second space outpost for Vita Extract? That's where I was going, but our current outpost is already backed up, and it's extremely close. Veldax hint of the day, did you know that you can restart Chrome by typing Chrome colon slash slash restart in the address bar? It's useful if one uses multiple profiles and have browser windows spread on multiple screens slash desktops. Indeed. I stopped using Chrome just because, uh, like most browsers, the memory footprint is obscene. This should be just about ready to go already. What number are we up to on our spaceships? 18! Holy crap. Needed to restart Chrome because of memory. <laughs> yeah, I'm using the uh, the gaming browser, Opera GX, because you can actually memory and CPU limit it. Um, burgers and fries. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. Uh, Ion. Hauler 18, I believe we were up to. Iron Hauler 18. Fantastic. Alright, let's get it... parked. Can we... integrity check? How was the rest of your stream? Okay, launch. And it should land here somewhere. Uh, I think it's... I think we decided on barrel core fragments. Nope, I think I have to manually anchor it. Also, how do we still have a construction bot hovering here? Gotta do, go take care of dogs. We'll be back in a minute to answer that. No worries. I used to just quick chrome and open it again, but that required opening each profile manually. Indeed. What are we waiting for here? We are waiting for... nothing. We're about to launch. Perfect. Fantastic. Iron Hauler 18 leaves on its maiden voyage to go and get... Exorion, I believe that's I Iridium? No, it's Beryl. That is a barrel, which I don't know why we just sent another ship to go get barrel. Um, when this is like empty, when we already had two ships on the way to do barrel, and I don't know why this one's hovering. Destination Exorian Orbit. Uh, anchor target is 1 plus 13. How did this get set back to 1? I'll just double check. I'm pretty sure barrel's supposed to be 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Core Fragment Barrel. Uh, bloody hell. How long has this been going on? Probably not long, since we just... I'm pretty sure we just sent ships back with, uh... Barrel Core Fragments. That's Vit. That's Beryl. It literally just happened. How did it happen? I 
I don't get it. Also, does our counter look accurate? Um, probably? 92k headed for outpost 3. Which one's 3 again? I think it's Exorion. Oh, that's 2. Uh, is it... Spiriso? Spiriso is outpost 3. That sounds about right. 90-something K. Oh, the ones that are headed for Spiriso are probably going to say Foe and Estra. That one's headed for Spiriso. It's waiting to land? No, closest is unknown asteroid belt, but it's stopped. What the bloody hell? Where is this ship? You're joking. Uh, it has... Why is it stopped? Oh. No? We've still got walls. What? What? No, I think something must be busted. Integrity check. Integrity valid. We've got water, we've got iron stream, we've got power. The solar alone would be enough to move at least. Um, What's our target speed? Target speed unlimited. Why are the accumulators empty? What? Why do both of... No, they don't. None of these have fuel in them. How did this happen? Okay, I think... I think we've fixed it. I think the soul is not enough for it to move. And... Boop. And... Energy? And target speed? I don't see any target speed yet. Once it gets above something or other, we get a speed signal. We, we should have a speed signal of, like, 40 already. So why isn't it moving? Alright. And then? Why did I have to click engage? Wait, why do I have to click engage again? It said it passed integrity check. And then it seems to do an integrity check and then just... What? Oh, do I have like a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that was the speed limiting function that I added. If we're... Detecting asteroids. Is it at the destination already? No. No, it is working now. <sighs> but, um... I think our counting system... I think our counting system thought there was, like... Several. Uh... Five or six ships on the way to Spiriso. But I definitely didn't see five or six ships that might be on the way to Spiriso just now. How does the counting system keep getting messed up? I, I don't understand the intermittent errors we're getting. 
like, we test it and we test it and we test it and everything seems to work fine. And then after a number of hours, we come back and check on things and we've got a ship or three in Hagen orbit that somehow took off with a handful of bots and uh, core fragments that it didn't drop off and no destination. Um, and we've got the system that keeps count of how many ships are headed where always seems to work when we're looking at it and then we check back later and it's like seven ships are on their way outbound to pick up from Spiriso. No, they fucking aren't. Wonder if slight blips during autosaves interrupts it? I don't think so. It does occur to me that power outages, like flickers of power could cause problems, especially where there's um, time shared stuff involved. But that doesn't seem to be it. It says there's negative eight. It says there's negative one ship headed for outpost zero. How is that happening? Going to bounce. Good night, T Hex. Take care, burgers. It's not like I could do a system that works without keeping track of how many ships are going where, right? Not if they're going to take any time at all to get there. Hmm. What if... What if I just did something like... God, this would be a significant redesign. But it would not it would allow us to stop doing like one signal per outpost. I think. I think uh how would I do it? What I'm thinking of is when we send a ship to an outpost, we basically put it on cooldown to report, please send me a ship. And we could probably base that cooldown on how long the ship takes, but they're all going to have fairly similar travel times. By the way, do the domain bounce.gn is free. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> How would I do it? Preferably using the central clock channel. Hmm. If I sent a signal that was like the address of this place, and we detected that, then we could trigger a timer that says don't send a signal for like, I don't know, five minutes. Hmm. And if we did that, uh, we wouldn't actually need unique signals. I, I'm actually really starting to like that idea, just because of this. Uh, if we can have it all totally generic and we don't need a unique signal to identify each outpost, as in, yes, Planet Orbit 683 refers to whatever outpost is at Planet Orbit 683, but like... We don't need signal zero represents this outpost, signal one represents this outpost, and we don't need to add to it indefinitely, depending on how big the system gets. T hacks is going to implement the internet. That's the idea. And we wouldn't have to worry about a counter system somehow ending up incorrect. It'd be self-correcting, right? So, outpost. It, it's going to be a non-trivial exercise to go and patch, like, seven outposts. Uh, but better to, 
Better to fix it sooner rather than later, right? TCP over signals and D. Yeah, so basically we're going to say if the conditions are met that we request... Well, we don't have to think about that. Like, that's already sorted. If the conditions are met, we send signal through on this channel, central dispatch, when it's our turn. And I could simply say... This, this part right here isn't time-shared. It's always receiving a signal, right? So if I put a little timer here that says, if we detect... Um, if whatever the address is here. Moon orbit 1001. If we detect on the central clock... Uh, maybe I should rename it. If we detect on that signal channel, moon orbit 1001, we're going to start a timer here that's going to reset itself. And for, let's say, five minutes, we're not going to transmit anything. And if we don't transmit anything, it means that central is not going to receive it here and chuck it on the memory cell and wow the memory cell's empty that really suggests we do have enough ships but we're clearly like backed up on vit core fragments here but we're not uh dumping as many core fragments as we could into the system on hagen What would be good to know is exactly how long it takes to get to each outpost. For the ones that don't go through, um, for the ones that don't go through the uh, the ether, the warp through Fo and Estra, we can actually just look at the ship leaving and look at the ETA once it gets up to speed. And for the ones that do go through Fo and Estra, we can just sort of assume a, a, an approximately equal travel time, I guess. Maybe add a minute or so if they're deeper into a system. What happens when the outpost wasn't ready to fully load a ship yet? Then it's not going to send a signal requesting a ship. Are you going to end up with three or four ships waiting? That's one of the things we're trying to avoid. Um, that is one of those things. Ooh. Vitalik Reagent is getting... Wait, are we already... Products finished. Zero. No, we're not. Um, that must have been left over from the... Uh, from the spaghetti research. What do we have here? Nothing? We haven't made any catalogs yet, I don't believe. We need... We still need three types of data cards dropped off for our first catalog one. And we've got... We're showing no signs of getting catalog two. Oh, I didn't update this, did I? The, these are just drop-offs, so I don't think we need a label there. Pickups, on the other hand. Um, significant biomass. And this one, I believe, is going to be uh, the final tier of DNA data card. Which... Uh, it's not experimental genetic. There it is, comparative genetic data. Okay, that needs to be moved. 
And this... Well, I don't think I need to label where we're getting contaminated scrap, do I? We're not really excited about that one. Oh, hey, more biomass. Fantastic. How long has this been going on? Uh, not very long. Not very long at all. It literally just started. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, this is working. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So... We're going to have a decider combinator. Wait, we, I don't think we need a decider. I might need to run wire all the way over here. Unless... It really doesn't seem like it's prioritizing... It seems like, if anything, it's implicitly prioritizing extract. Unless a train has been here recently. Let's look at production. Vit. Oh, wow. Uh, well, that's not giving us our net amount because the spice is being consumed to make the extract. Just eyeballing this. We're obviously getting a lot more extract than we're getting regular vitamelange. So that means... Oh, this isn't even connected yet. Um... Yeah, no, that just goes here. So input signals, why don't... I see Vitamelange extract. What? There's lots of extract here. Oh, because that's tub. Okay. So with our multiplier, we've got less extract than spice. Oh, way more spice than extract, rather. If they had the same stack size, uh, comparing the stacks. That is what we want to know. So, I kind of need to run a wire all the way back here, but it's going to be messy. Unless. Hmm. Since the system implicitly prioritizes extract, can we make this reach? Oh, I could definitely put this over here. Oh, that looks kind of tacky. Wait, 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 wait. We need to compare... Spice? Spice times four to extract. And then... How did this get removed? Oh, I remember. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, spice. 200, 100. That's how much we're going to ignore. I could put, like, negative a million here, actually. Um, and then on this green wire... Let's just double check. We should have extract versus four times the amount of spice we've actually got because stack sizes. And then we're just going to say extract less than spice. Okay. 
That seems fine. So now... I guess it's going to keep going until all of this is backed up. Uh, that's a lot of extract. We might want to... Actually make it at least a couple of stacks. You know what? If there's two stacks of this, we know we've got more than enough extract for the moment. Right? Unless we want to let this entire thing back up with extract before we get spice into the system. I don't think that's what we're looking for. This should be able to work to let spice through when when we're letting the extract through here. Yeah, that should be fine. So now, because we've got lots of extract, um, we're letting spice through at a non-zero pace. Fantastic. And what I really want to see now is how it's going to balance make sure that works, but it's going to take a little while to find out. Oh, that's much better. That's what I want to see. Cool, cool, cool. Should I prioritize this? No, that's probably fine. Except won't it mean that at most we're only getting half a belt? Let's see. This can theoretically do 32 per second, which is more than half of a blue belt. So why don't we upgrade this part? Half of 90 is 45, 45 is significantly more than 32, so once that kind of saturates, we should actually get our max rate of spice coming through here, about 32 per second. Zero, one... Uh, I think we're getting almost that already. It's only when it saturates. That's the thing. Oh. Oh, we're starting to... Wait, what? Oh, yeah. It, it, we already caught up. Cool, cool, cool. Excellent. It's balanced. That's what I like to see. Uh, and if we do that, we could probably... Yeah, 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 I think I will. We'll make sure we keep a bit of spice here. And here as well. And even when we're prioritizing spice, we'll keep that little bit of spice in these containers so that this can kickstart nice and quick. Also, this is working as expected. Fantastic. That's exactly what I want to see. Budgie bum, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is spice backing up on the right hand belt? Uh, this one? That's the idea. Oh, you mean spice or extract? Yeah, I think that's working quite well. We stopped getting input, though. 
All right, I think it's time to try and redesign our spaceships. Or rather, the outposts. I really should leave some construction bots and combinators at each of these outposts. Um, but it's not going to take that long to update them. Spice, but it sorted itself out when you wanted purple belt. Perfect. Perfection. I really want to see more... Why is this one not working? Sand? Oh no. How did sand get so imbalanced? Do we have sand on the way? No? Hmm... That's kind of a problem. How much sand are we looking for? Probably two train loads. Um, if I set it to like, let's see, if we consume 80 per second, how many stacks is that? How long does it take sand to get delivered here? Let's say one minute. Um, 80 times 60. 4,800. So if I drop this down to like 25,000. Uh, it, oh, here we go. I'm hoping... I'm hoping it won't get so imbalanced. So if it takes one minute for a train to get here with sand, which, uh, considering the stack size of sand or how long it takes to load, maybe is actually pretty realistic, even though the trains are really fast. But if we set the excess... Uh, if we set it to request a train when we're down to, like, four th uh, 5,000... Um... It should be quite low here, and therefore, at worst, pretty close to balanced when the train drops this off. And that way we don't have to go to the trouble of using a big giant balancer splitter thing. Well, it wouldn't be big and giant, but it would be not where I want to put it. Cool, cool, cool. So this is blocked right now, which means we should be getting spice faster in a minute. Um, but it does have to accumulate those 3, 6, 9, 18 stacks of spice. It's probably a bit overkill, actually. What do we need? 30, 60. I think I'll just set this to 60. We'll hold on to 60 extract, or spice rather, in each of those containers, so that once we once this kicks in, it can definitely start a recipe. Or have an extra recipe handy. Um, but yeah, the balancing seems to be working very well. quite happy with that. How's our actual bioscience looking? We've got a train load. Why is the... Why did we remove the provide stack threshold from here? Aziz Light! Aziz Light? Zern, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, not sure why that would be needed. Probably copy-pasted it from somewhere where we didn't have the bulk rail loader to make the wire reach. Um, and this one? Same deal. We don't have a train load here yet, anyway. 
This one looks correct. And we know this one's been working. Ooh, we get some experimental genetic. Products finished. 2,700 or so. I think there's been... It does two per recipe. I think there's been a trainload delivered. It's either up here or over here. Well, those are... Both of those possibilities turned out to be... This one's correct, actually. Products finished. Because, yeah, I saw this earlier. We've made some uh, experimental biomass alre already. I wonder how I missed that. I mean, I wonder how chat missed that. E yeah. Blame chat. Where was it? Over here. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, don't we have this recipe now? We do not. Chance fault. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Indeed. Why are we in why are we in emote only mode? What? Um I wanna finish this tour. Make sure everything theoretically works. So we can get to fixing the outposts. Oh no. <laughs> uh, that looks fine, I think. Ooh, we got biocombustion data. Fantastic. Two to go, except I'm pretty sure... We're going to dump a bunch more biomass in here before we get the biomass where it's needed. Why are we so slow on biomass? Oh, it's spice. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've actually caught up with bio sludge effectively. Well, we've shifted the bottleneck, which is the main thing. And one of the reasons we're looking at spaceships is to try and fix spice. Which should have a train on the way. Oh, I changed the station name. Oh, no. Where's our train that's supposed to pick up spice? Did it, like, go back upstairs because the station didn't exist? I don't see it here. Alright, so this one... this one's wrong. Uh, extract... Provider... Full card. That's a lot of ships that just took off and or landed. One, two... Probably one took off. Cool, cool, cool. I see two moving at the same time. They shouldn't be, like, double launching. I don't know how that's possible. Where are you going? Exorion Orbit... Number 16 is going to... Exorion Orbit. And number 6... Is going to Exorion Orbit. I don't understand how this happens. You've got your cables. Does 16 have cables? It does. So... If we have two ready ships, are they somehow... No, even if... Even if they both receive those orders, like, back to back, they should be, like, five seconds apart. Because the memory cell holds on to just one outpost request thing at a time. 
And then a ship lands, it empties, it, it reports that it's ready to launch eventually. Then this fills the memory cell, then the bots put stuff in, and it's got its destination and everything. Then it takes off five seconds later. After the bots stop moving, I guess... I guess if that outpost is still reporting? So when the ship takes off, we empty this memory cell. We get a report from the same outpost that immediately fills this memory cell a few ticks later. It shouldn't be possible. It can literally only send all of that stuff through to one of the launchers at a time. And it's not that a ship that's trying to land at the same spot is immediately launching either, because otherwise it would launch uh, full of core fragments and probably bots. I have absolutely no idea how that is happening. Also, why are you not landing? Don't tell me. No? Ion Hauler 18. It doesn't have an ID. Bruh. Hurry up and anchor. Probably should have checked that when it launched on its maiden voyage. Yeah, I really don't know how... How we're double launching ships. I'll just double check again, but I'm pretty sure the reset signal... Anything greater than zero reset. That's from this... Oh, the reset signal gets sent through as soon as there's something on this memory cell. That actually does make sense. We're not waiting for the ship before we send the reset signal. No, 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 no. We are. The, the countdown, at least, has to has, have started. I could say... Hmm... Where is this green wire connected to? All of this. All of the... Okay, okay, okay. I could say if ship launch greater than 300. Which means the ship has officially been told to launch. Like, not just it's ready to launch, it's and everything, but the countdown is finished. If I change this to ship launch greater than 300, and that's when we reset the memory cell at central. I think, I think that'll actually do it. That'll probably stop double sending ships do we have any more uh, nope cool 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 instead of the moment the ship countdown starts we reset central memory cell it's the moment the ship is, uh, actually given the order to... Wait, what? 
Hold up. If spaceship launch greater than 300 output spaceship launch 1. No, it was already set up like that. God damn it. And greater than 300 is never going to happen, because that 300 happens on this green wire. This memory cell right here. So if this one's outputting any spaceship launch signal, then the ship is ready to launch. Like, it's literally getting the launch order. Which means I still have no idea how we're double launching. Um... I guess I could... I could borrow this reset signal. If S greater than zero, I'll put everything input count. That means if ship is detected. What if... Fingers crossed it works, indeed. I want to borrow this. This is the reset the local memory cell the moment that the ship leaves. Um, Combinator? And what I'd like to do instead... So this is... The, we're going to be getting rid of this with the new uh, system, if we implement it. Um, if S is greater than zero, output everything. That goes to central dispatch. Uh, and then... And then based on the destination, we multiply it into a different type of signal. So that we have a count of how much spaceship is on the way to that outpost. So that part's going to go. That part is going to go. Which means we don't need this wire reaching all the way up here. Um, but what we could do, if R equals zero, output everything. So it's not going to output R ever. Is it possible a signal bounces between the emitters in central dispatch? The ones at the bottom. And then all the ships ready receive a signal. No, because at central what we're doing here is... You can see how with the anything greater than zero output anything combinator. Currently we're receiving two signals and it only outputs one. Whichever one comes first in the arbitrary signal ID like type order um so then we detect barrel which means the ship at the barrel drop off is ready to launch so is the vitamelange one but we only output that one signal and then it goes to all of these and then we say if barrel signal equals one pass it all through so makes it all the weirder that we're double sending ships it's really, really strange. So we're not going to be doing this anymore. And as for the reset signal, I could probably just borrow it from that red wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put... Output 1R. If I could reach it all the way across here... Well, it has to be on the red wire. It's kind of a shame that this happens to be using red wire for the memory cell. 
it may it may not be strictly necessary in the most uh, perfect iteration, uh, like if I perfectly refined this, but I think what I'll do is... Let me fly over there. It's up this way, actually. Fraser K. Pelusal. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so some of this, some of this, as we work on it, might mess around with the spaceships a little bit, but the system that we're going to upgrade it to doesn't have any counters or anything for the ships, so it should all autocorrect eventually. Who knows, maybe we'll accidentally, uh, accidentally delete the rare bug where ships launch with this it's not happening right now but ships like launch into orbit again with a few core fragments left over okay also wait a sec if core fragments here are saturated uh i don't think we need more ships right now i think we need another train to transport Vitamelange core fragments. Oh, holy crap, that's a lot. Uh, you know what? I don't even think we need another train for this. I think I just need to reduce... What do we got? Like, almost 10k here? If I set this to 5,000... Then next time core fragments should get dropped off on this side. How fast does it even consume them? 48 per second. So I'm not running a whole belt. Well, I could do like purple belt. I could do like a, a single belt to supply all of these if I really wanted to. Probably should, to be honest. Also, I wanted to check, um, we need to make this a, what is it called? We need to make a logistic train stop here. Because... Fifty k Wait, oh no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. 5k. Thank you. Zern, Captain Tree. Ag Agahondra. Arigato. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Sleepy Dove, welcome, welcome. Also, silly question time. Are the transmitters on the right names? Uh, yes, yes, they are. Otherwise, we would have had trouble a lot sooner. Alright, so we're still going to use train limits, um, just like we did here. Should already be set up the same way. And... And then we'll put this here. That looks kind of sketch. That's a little bit better. And we've already got an LTN train. That's not the LTN train. Did I activate? Oh, 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 we need to allow short trains here. Hmm. Technically, that could cause balancing issues. I'm not even going to worry about it. With the throughput, with the stack sizes, with the fact that we're staying saturated, at least for now. Um, I'm just going to sort of trust that it'll sort itself out. Because we only very occasionally need a delivery of core fragments from a short train. To go to Bioscience 4. 
which is only going to consume them at a rate of... Well, if we don't give it modules or anything, and before we upgrade the research server, uh, it's like 0 0.2 core fragments per second. I think it'll probably be fine. Probably. Um, but yeah, either we need another train to move VIT core fragments, and or I shouldn't set the limit here so high. I think I probably should do another train for VIT core fragments though. If I didn't already do... There's one up here. And... There is... I was going to say there's zero down here. Okay, so that's one. And that's the only one. Okay, okay. Where did our train go? Let's blueprint it real quick. Fit core fragment train. And we're going to build that here. I know it's another squirrel. It won't take long. Looked like the filters on the space unloaders weren't set. Uh, which ones? For the VIT science build? I definitely checked those before we made the blueprint. Alright, we need some fuel. And some engine bits. And... Can I, like, control-click this? That actually works. It does overdo it, though. Alright, and it's already got the schedule. Cool, cool, cool. Down you go. Actually, I wanted to ride that. Whoops. By four, maybe I just couldn't see... Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, no, no. I didn't, um... Where was it? Uh, I didn't actually finish this part because we're going to have um, advanced science lab, which will take up this much space. Like, Bio 3 is going to let us unlock the advanced science lab. So this is just sort of a placeholder, this bit. That should be fine, though. Alright, um... I wonder... Uh, how much... What's the maximum that our Moss Garden Outpost can theoretically give us? Uh, we didn't expand that much, either. There's definitely... Why did it trim to here? Moss Garden. Trim surface. View surface. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, there's like one drill that we haven't tapped that's still visible. But if we look at entity drill, we know we've got uh, only eight. Uh, our theoretical maximum before we upgrade this is 45 per second. And our processing can support 48 per second. So we definitely don't need to build more yet. We just need to make the inputs a bit more consistent. It trimmed funny because you were autoclaving still. Ah. Wait, does that mean I haven't confirmed hostile extinction? No, we've we've done that. Okay, cool. Why? It's always Exorion. This thing doesn't have a. Okay, I I don't think this is a rare bug. Um. 
I think... Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not right. When they're outbound, this is supposed to be ID 1, isn't it? At every single outpost? Yeah, it is. Uh, I should probably check on these things more so I don't forget how they work. When we're fixing or patching them. Yeah, there's a reason every single ship got confused at Ixorion. Okay. It's pretty slow anyway with the barrel core fragments from here. Alright. So back to the problem at hand. Wait indefinitely. There were some inserted ghosts by the looks though. Perhaps not an issue yet, but I think that's temporary output. Inserted ghosts? Where? Alright, um, so now that's going to get imbalanced. Hmm. I, I could always just do the thing we usually do. Except then most of the time we're going to bottleneck on 45%. If the if our main outpost can only give us 45-ish per second, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Probably. Actually, I kind of forgot I really don't want... Such a constricting limit here. Because we've got such a huge number of core fragments that we want to clear from the station so that ships can move. Hmm. I think we'll just have to leave it like this and hope for the best. Or I could do an inserter that says keep stealing until this has a cargo wagon. That actually sounds fine. Why don't we do that? If VIT core fragment less than 20 times 50, 1000. Grab them. That should be fine. Or, or, I, or, I, or I could do that with a belt, actually. That, that seems fine, too. If this is less than 2,000... I'd have rather put it down here, actually. Savi the Fox, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, um stop chasing squirrels. Let's let's do something about this. I need to pass through 
Actually, I could from this red wire. No, 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 no. We do need. If R greater than zero, output R1. Put this about here. It's going to look like it belongs with that group. I don't like that. And then this goes all the way down here and looks super tacky. Okay. And then we get rid of this. We don't need this at all. So even if we're not perfectly optimizing our combinate account here... Um, we're certainly reducing our combinator count. Alright, let's do that with the other outposts. Uh, with the other... Other spots. And I think this is the last one for now. And nope, there's one more, I think. Okay. Yeah, so when the ship leaves, this gets reset and central memory cell gets reset. What? That's kind of weird, actually. No, because as soon as... As soon as this one's not ready, I think Central will... Oh god. Central Dispatch, reset this memory cell when a ship launches. Passes at three. Just hold onto this until we launch a ship. As opposed to send it to one of the ready ships and then forget about it and send it to a different one. Then we have to remember which ones have been sent a signal. Yeah, no, this is a lot simpler. Squirrel or shiny penny? Indeed. Uh, okay. So if we're implementing this system, we no longer need to count... If anything not equal to zero output everything oh it's a memory cell. Right, right, right. It's an unconditional memory cell. So this this part we're not gonna need anymore. And we're not gonna We're basically just not going to have a condition here at this end. We're not gonna have a condition for whether we send a ship to a certain outpost. And we're not going to need all our disk crap. So, central dispatch receives from an outpost when it's its turn on the green wire. Oh, on the red wire. We're not going to be doing this anymore. I should probably go and disable those. Cut the blue wire, indeed. So it's actually red signal that we send everything through here. And the green signal was for the memory cell count. Okay. What if we used green wire for the, uh, 
If R greater than zero, output one R. Wait, 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 wait. I can't remember why we needed that one. Couldn't we simply... It would not exactly create a loop. If that was simply connected to there. Oh boy. Boy oh boy, but there's only one thing connected to this now, so I could probably put it up here instead. And then save a combinator. And then... Well, I'm gonna leave this red wire here, because I'm not about to go... to every outpost and change one more thing. But we can pr probably put this one up here, about like here for the symmetry of it. Set that to central dispatch, remove this, remove this. We'll use the green wire to reset the memory cell at central dispatch. and won't have to worry about any cross-contamination there. And I don't think we need if R greater than zero output one R here. That can just connect directly. So we've reduced our combinator count again. Maybe if I turned this memory cell upside down, it would be a bit clearer. Kind of. Except that that goes way down here. <laughs> what if... No, it's fine. We'll just leave it like that. Oh, no, I hate this. Put it back this way. Even though that reaches across there. All right. So, oi, 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 what's this? No, bad. All right, so we're going to put you up here. And remove this. Remove that. You up here. Remove this, remove that. Green wire. We'll check that. Where's the spell evader? There it is. Green wire. Green wire. And green wire. I'd better double check that all of those are set to central dispatch as well. One more. Oh. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. And we need to run our scaffolding drain past all of this mess. I'm hoping, but not expecting... Actually, let's just give it five seconds per station. See if that actually works. Hello? Trains can use nuclear fuel as fuel? Uh, not these trains. If we use a 
nuclear locomotive they can. Uh, oh, oh, do you mean like in vanilla? There, there isn't any such thing as nuclear fuel uh, with this mod set. Oh, yes, there is. Uh, I think the regular trains can, probably. But the nuclear locomotives actually use uranium fuel cells, I believe. And the trains that we're currently using have to use these, uh, space train power packs. Machine Freak, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I want to speed them up, indeed. Uh, if you have a, if you have a mod that lets you put, uh, equipment in vehicles, cram it full of electric engines or exoskeleton legs if it'll let you do something like that. And it'll actually make it more fuel efficient as well, because you're getting some of the acceleration from these. Very, very nice. Come to think of it, I wonder if I could have got more speed and fuel efficiency from my trains. It's a bit late now. But if I... No, it's fine. I was going to say, if I only used one block here and had some batteries... They only use 250 kilowatt each. That's one megawatt. That's... I don't know. It depends on the batteries. But I guess you could put another, an eighth advanced additional electric engine in. Have some kind of power source. Have some batteries. And as long as the batteries last, you'll get more speed and more fuel efficiency out of these. Then this does. Thank you for the follow, Machine Freak. Okay, so now we've got a system whereby it'll just send probably infinite ships to one location. Because we're not remembering where we're sending our ships right now. Um, so it's going to be a bit random. Yay, indeed. So we need to go to our outposts. I'll take the construction ship because it's the fastest one we have. And I didn't leave construction bots and combinators and such, because that would have been a little bit of a pain. So we will have to visit these directly, but it's going to be a real quick patch to update this. Let's go to... I was going to say Exorion first, but Verb T is actually closest out of the outposts that we've set up this way. T orbit go. There is such a thing as too fast, aka killer trains. I, I, I wouldn't know anything about that. Nope. Not even a little bit. You did leave construction bots on some outposts. Yeah, but they don't have any combinators or anything. We'll be there in 28 seconds. So what I want to do at the outpost is... Hmm. On central clock... I'm going to have to add something back here, I think. Well, I could add it here. We could say if we've got something on the memory cell, send, send it back to central clock. Nope, 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 nope. It's got a clock timer signal on it. That's going to cause a weird loop. Should I do it here or at the outposts, though? I mean, not outposts, the launches slash pickups. Hmm. I'd have to add this, like, here, now that I think of it. So, that actually sounds like a good idea. If on this memory cell...
if on this memory cell we've got planet signal such and such, planet orbit, whatever, this is just the same problem, but we're like pushing it aside a little bit. No, I think we should do it at central. I might need a bunch of combinators just to separate out... What do we normally send on central timer? We obviously send time signal. And we're also sending uh, various core fragments. So that we know how many core fragments are in the drop-off for each type back at, uh, back at Hagen orbit. Hmm. Okay, so that's core fragments and time. If I were to... Remove... I could, I could just do one of those decider combinators with each greater than zero, and then a constant combinator next to it, just like we've got here and a bunch of giant negative numbers for anything we don't want to send through. So we'll grab what we've got on the memory cell here. Um, we'll probably use this one, actually. Whoops. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Alright, so... Each greater than zero, output each... Input count, constant combinator, bunch of big negative numbers. Uh, we will listen to the memory cell. And I should probably just move this over rather than make a copy of it. Um, that was for tweaking stuff. We don't need that. Leave it. Pick the dollies to the rescue. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I need a constant combinator, so why don't I borrow this one? <laughs> Who needs construction bots? Okay. How did... what? Wait, what? What do you mean? I can't move it to the right? What? 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 Okay. Alright. Alright. Anyway. That's our central timer. Transmitter. Central clock. I could send it on the red wire. Actually, yeah. All of these other ones are using green. These uh, signal transmitters are the one types of combinators where you can sort of use the red and green as two different channels as opposed to implicitly adding. So if all of these are using green, uh, we don't need no stinking decide a combinator over here to separate signals that we don't need. We can just say... like that. Uh, maybe it would be tidier if I put it over here. Something like this. Can we get the scaffolding train to pay it a visit? Wait indefinitely. Maybe I should have put it up here because traffic. It's probably fine. Pick a bodies mod? Uh, pick a dollies, yes. Puts the bullet in bullet train, <laughs> indeed. Why so many accumulators? Because the space elevator spikes like crazy when trains go through it. 
Okay. So we're going to put this here for a moment. So that we can move these around. Oh my god. What do you mean why I cannot reach? There we go. I thought picket dollies was supposed to prevent wires from going further than they can reach. It seems like the signal transmitters and receivers are able to make things a bit stranger. Okay. There we go. There we go. Alright, so that's our timer. And this is transmitting to the universe the contents of this memory cell, but on the red wire, which won't interfere with our green wire signal down here. Fantastic. Okay. Now, let me just trim this a little bit, see how that looks. Beautiful. Actually, I don't quite like that so much. It's not very consistent with what we've had before. That's not too bad, I guess. Lua entities... Oh, I hope that didn't mess anything up. Yeah, piccadillies with signal transmitters might be a bit weird when they're already transmitting. I think I will actually bring this up here. That feels more consistent and stuff. Alright, and we don't need these, and we don't need these, and hopefully never mind. Sure enough, the bots are not finding room. Hopefully that'll get itself sorted out. Fantastic. Now, what we're going to do at this end is if we are preparing to launch a ship to this outpost, which we can detect by saying if on the red wire uh, moon orbit is equal to 1176, Fantastic. Moon orbit equals eleven seventy six. Then we want to prevent the time signal from moving through. And until I decided to do it with the, with the red wire, I knew how I was going to do this. Sorry, is, is the audio okay, or are you able to hear that? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Oh. I could always put in an artificial time signal of like... Negative a million or something. Hear what? Okay, good. 
good, good, good. Fantastic. Hearing nothing but T-Hacks. This is good. Alright, so we're gonna say... Constant Combinator. Uh, if the memory cell back at home has our address on it, then it's already trying to prepare a ship to come this way. So if that happens, output time signal. Times negative a million. Which means we're never going to get, like, time greater than 20, for example, when we're checking if it's our turn. Currently, it's trying to dispatch to Planet Orbit 683. So this shouldn't have an effect on it. It should be passing through the time signal... Every little while? Why am I not... Oh, it's probably not doing it because Core Fragment Holmanite is greater than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have two conditions. Core Fragment Holmanite back at home isn't very full. And... We're not already trying to send a ship here. Like, we're not already preparing one. Wait, no, that's not gonna... that's not gonna be good enough, because I need to add a timer. So what we want to do is hold that thought for like five minutes after... after a ship has been sent. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And what's the best way to do it with, uh... You combinators and stuff. If I send a T signal instead of time. Okay, first of all, I want a timer that resets itself. Okay, okay. Decide a combinator. Local address. If that's true, output one T. And then, if t greater than zero, output t input count. Right? And loop it on the second one. And if we are receiving that signal, what was it? Moon orbit 1176. The moment that we stop receiving Moon Orbit 1176, it should disappear entirely. No, no it doesn't. Um... Oh, I could probably do it like this. Yeah, 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 the same decided signal. The same decision on both, but this one outputs input count. So then turn it on, it starts ticking up. Switch it off, it disappears entirely. The thing is, though... I want it to count down. Hmm... What if I had it add to a negative that's already over here? So like... Green wire goes here. Red wire goes here. We've got like... what's five minutes? 60 ticks times 60 ticks. Times five, eighteen thousand. 
So if t negative 18,000. And then we say if t greater than zero, output something. And then we turn this on. That would be give us a signal when we have been receiving this for five minutes. But we want to allow a signal when it hasn't been happening for five minutes. Um, in which case, I'm going about this backward. Uh, we need a timer that's like unconditional. Oops. How about t equals 1? And... Oh, I know. If moon orbit is not equal to 1176, output t input count. So that's going to count up just all the time. The moment that we receive moon orbit such and such, it's going to stop counting. Oh, it's going to reset entirely. What am I saying? Count five minutes since the last time that we did receive that signal and only let this through since then. Right? Yeah, no, I think, I think that's actually like this, right? What about a memory cell that bolds t equals 1, reset when t equals 5 minutes, set 1 when dispatch requested? Um, my brain's a bit full right now, I'm trying to figure out, give me a sec. So this one doesn't work... Uh, why is this so confusing? Probably because my brain doesn't work. Okay, okay. Five minutes is 18k, right? Oh, no, 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 this is it, this is it. Okay, so the moment... Let, let's set it to, like, 30 seconds. 1800. So, we're currently receiving Moon Orbit 1176, which means back at dispatch it's getting ready to send a ship here. Uh, the ship has been sent, timer starts ticking, and we've got this offset of negative 1800, which is 30 seconds. And once it reaches, once it once it's greater than zero, it'll output green. Which means our condition is met. Now the only trouble with this is if this thing reaches int max, it will go negative and roll over. But that's going to take such a long time, I don't think we need to worry about it in this case. So the count is always active, but we control when we add one. Kind of, yeah. Oh no, we need to reset this. Hmm. Wait, no, no, no. When it's... Yeah, it does stop, uh, right? It resets... It resets T when we receive the... The local address. Cool, cool, cool. So then, if all of that output time input count, and then we just have to squeeze it through here somewhere. Like this. Uh, I don't think we need... Oh, we do need that constant. So this T right here is where we change 
how long it takes, how long we think it takes for a ship to get here. Or maybe get halfway here, depending on how we want to set it up. Sound like the, sounds like the guy's inventing timestamp. <laughs> Got to invent a lot of things. Alright, so... Red wire? Alright, so basically, if... Well, this shouldn't say everything. This should say time signal. If core fragment holmanite is less than X back at home, let the time signal through. And if... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time signal. If T is greater than zero, let the time signal through. T is going to be greater than zero when we haven't heard from home base for at least five minutes. That seems good. I should probably check... Um, Oh, where's this one going? Oh, it's inbound. Are these two stuck? Kinda. When are we launching a ship from here? Are we launching a ship from here, or have I broken it for the moment? There's nothing on this memory cell. Oh, it hasn't finished outputting yet. No, I think I think this still works. Do we have a ship that's about to drop off? Ion Hauler 5, perhaps? Is coming back with Beryl. Famous last words. Um, I just want to remind myself of the ETA to get to most of our outposts. So the moment we launch Iron Hall of Five again, and it gets up to speed, we'll have a good idea. But yeah, I think that's our... I think that's our setup. And then we don't need this, we don't need this. Once we actually get it sorted, it's not that complicated. Hopefully. Alright, we need to go to the other outposts to patch it like this. But next step, I think, is Exorion. Exorion Orbit. Let's see. I don't think I've updated Gibble. No, I, I still haven't updated Gibbel, which is a bit uh, surprising. It's a source of iridite. And then there's also Moss Garden. All right. So this is going to go about here. Oh, it's going to be really easy to patch as well. Should probably wait till I get there, though. Oops. I'll have to do something about that. Alright. Baller number five. Ladies and gentlemen. Where is hauler number five? It must be this one. No, that's number four. Did it already leave? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it must just be getting up to speed now. Cool, cool, cool. What's our ETA? Where are we going? Stromhurst? Twelve minutes? Hmm. 
Hmm. So if I set it to like six or seven minutes, we could send up to two ships to each outpost. And I could adjust the delay for the different outposts individually, depending on how much throughput we want. Just departed, indeed. Jaggers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, we need core fragment barrel here. And that goes green wire, and that goes red wire, and I think that's all there is to it. Let's help these bots out. We've got plenty of construction bots here. Uh, probably too many to be honest. Oh, 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 don't forget to change the address. Moon Orbit 1001, very important. So if our local address is detected in the memory cell back home... What? No. No, stop. Stop. Stop it. Oh my god. I need to be careful with my personal... Robo stuff. Uh... Have some blue belt. Chuck this in my inventory. Why are we bonking? What's the bonk for? Change the orbit ID? I did. Morning bonk. Moon orbit 1001, moon orbit 1001, barrel core fragments. Get them, rouse, rouse. Get them, rouse, rouse. Moon orbit 1001. Cool, cool, cool. That should all be correct. Now we need to move on to Moss Garden. This, uh, this version will have its drawbacks. Like, we're going to need to tweak how much, what's the maximum number of spaceships, you know, what was the maximum through rate of spaceships that we want to send to each outpost. But... But I really, really like how we don't need arbitrary signal types for each outpost. It's going to be completely generic. 12 spaceships, of course? What was that? What do you mean? Just throwing a number? Even after refresh, my delay is slower than Biosludge. Oh no. Wrong ship? What, what do you mean, wrong ship? <gasps> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, please, no. Uh, get rid of, go, go back to Exorian Orbit, please. Oh no, that's not our construction ship. It has its similarities, but that's not our construction ship. Unfortunate. Nope. nope, indeed. Goodness. Uh. All right, twenty seconds until we get there. How's Bio looking? Hopefully, we haven't broken the core fragment supply too badly. No, I think we're fine. I, I think. I think we're okay. Two K is Oh, this should be set to one K for one cargo wagon. All right. So that 
that's what the bunk was for? Sure, retroactively figure that out. Alright, let me out. And is that going to mess anything up? I don't think so. Probably. Probably should have thought about that first. I'm pretty sure I can just send it back to Hagen Orbit. That should be fine. Alright, into the ship we go, this time the correct one. Uh, and we're going to Moss G. Moose G? Moss Garden Orbit, away we go. And time to grab a drink, I think. Down to about seven seconds, nice. Oh, that was fast. I haven't got my drink yet. Oh no. T-Hex, do you remember how much health a huge space rocks ha rock has? Uh, a medium has 60,000? That doesn't sound right. It's got to be some arbitrary thing when we're shooting them down. Alright, we're going to anchor... Do we... Wait, wait, wait. I definitely don't want to connect the RoboPort networks. That could be bad. They don't have resistances? I see. But 60,000 though? Alright, so this is Vitamelange core fragments. And our local address is Moon Orbit 1170. And then green wire to here. And that should be all we need. Fantastic. I'm really liking the simplification and more robustness from this, even though it has its downsides. Uh, we need to go to... I think that's everything for the outposts that we've updated in this system. Um, we also need to go to Warsol. Warsol Orbit. I'd better tag all these outposts so I don't forget about them. I do have some here. Um, that's not it. Let's see. Spiriso Orbit, Corsal Orbit, Stromhurst Orbit. Um, should probably add Exorion Orbit. Uh, let's see. Create a new pin. And what's that going to be? Barrel Core Fragments. Is it double R or is it double X? No hotkey. And we should be able to find it here. Fantastic. Cool, cool, cool. Just nuke the roids? Oh god. Make the visual sign just like name in base? Just like name in base. Don't even need to aim, just shoot the same spot every time. <laughs> Sounds like endgame Plants vs. Zombies survival mode. With the corn cob launches. Uh, Alright, we need a tag for this one. This is going to be Vit Core Fragments. 
uh, in its moss garden. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, it has the name there, so I should probably call it something like, uh, Outpost Pickup, Outpost, how about Outpost Pickup? And this one, Outpost Pickup, Outpost Pickup. Outpost pickup. One, two, three, four, five. This one is Spirosaur Orbit. We're getting more organized by the second. Uh, and let's not forget Verb T. Uh, which is. Holmanite Core Fragments. Outpost pickup. Fantastic. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's... I shouldn't have deleted them yet. Um, back here. Oh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's all of our outposts that we've uh, sorted out that way. Name in base, Solovix. No worries. Let's see if we still have room in space around the elevator. Um, what do you guys think? Should we start using space like here? I think probably yes. Perfect. Can you glaive in front of the... Wait, what? Can you glaive in front of the spaceship? <laughs> that would be big brain. You'd probably have to do it manually, even if you could, like each trip. Because it creates the surface after you start. Just regular artillery on the ship? We did play with laser artillery on the ship, um, which was a pretty funny meme. Okay, how long till we get there? Almost five minutes. Thank you very much for the Prime sub, Solovix. Much appreciated. And welcome in. Thank you so much for the Prime. Always appreciate that someone would pick me for their one Prime sub. It's actually quite smart how the spaceship works. Uh, spaceships work, indeed. Like, I'm not wrong in thinking it's the spaceships that are still and the asteroids that move. Yes, that is what's happening. That's the illusion. If you look on the map, um... I don't know, is it somehow more clear if we look on the map? The fact that they make the steam and, and like, spaceship particles move backward... It's kind of a clever touch. They must have blanket done it for all the particles, because I think if you wanted to make it a, look, a little bit more believable, um, the steam would probably stay inside, right? Uh, yeah. Factorio has a wind? I suppose it does. All right, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Three minutes. Let's have a look back at how bioscience is doing. We still only have these first two data cards. Uh, it's it's real slow. I'm guessing we haven't even made any. Uh, can we look? Can we search specimen? Ever since FNEI made me search for specimen. That's what I always think of when I'm trying to think of the word biomass. And I always type biomass when I'm trying to look for bio purple stuff. We haven't made... Wait, wait, how do I reset all this? There we go. 
Um, we haven't made biomass in 1.5 hours, apparently. That's pretty bad. What happened? We don't have any vitamelange here. Some spice. I thought we sped up spice. We did? Oh, 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 I never found that train. I never found the train that's supposed to pick up Vitamelange Spice. Um, is it upstairs? I hope it's upstairs. That'll make it a lot easier. I don't think it is, because I checked for... Oh. Oh, it's it's been going around in circles. I believe. Okay. We found it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Down the elevator you go. And then, into the depot real quick. Get some rouse rouse. And then, here it comes at last. If I do name in base times three, what will you do then? Uh, that's an overflow error, right? So we're back to non-gold, surely. That, that's how that works. Yeah, I think our science is going to get a little bit faster now. Invisible letters. Um... I was going to say, are we bottlenecked on this thing? But no, actually, it turns out it can support a purple belt. Doesn't look like a purple belt. Shouldn't that be 90 per second? It's not a full belt. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's very hard to see with how fast this is. Maybe it's easier to see with the Twitch filters. Um, The way it smooths... I mean, we've got a high frame rate here. We're at almost 60 UPS, but like, you know, that that's pretty full, actually. Hmm. Oh. Oh, it's full. Never mind. Never mind. All right. I think science is going to go burr now in a little while, at least for two minutes, maybe even three minutes. Cool, cool, cool. And we're here. Perfect timing. Let's drop in at Corso. While we're here... Uh... Do I have it? Do I have... The umbrella? I do not have the umbrella. I thought... I thought we requested Umbrella in here somewhere. I... That's an energy beam receiver. Okay, how about this? Umbrella. And hopefully next time we'll bring one. When's our next CME? It is headed for Hagen Orbit, actually, in only 7 hours and 41 minutes. So tomorrow... Uh, that looks a little bit different from usual. Oh, was this the first one that we made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, that's why there's only one decider combinator for the time. If time is less than five, then we're going to output. Okay, let's figure this out. So that just needs to be Immersite Cave. That needs to be Red Wire. And we need timer less than five and nothing else.
This doesn't go here. And we could do either input. That can just go there. That should be it. I, I feel like it's going to be easier to follow if this follows the same shape as what we've usually got. Okay, so let the time signal through if all these conditions... We're not sending it through because we've got too much Immersite Cave Core Fragment back at home. That should be good to go. I already got rid of these. On to the next one. What is a CME? Coronal Mass Ejection. The sun spits out a whole bunch of energy. Not necessarily where you want that energy. Cheap metal elements? What? You could use the anything signal, I think, for greater than zero. Otherwise, you can use everything equals zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what you want to watch out for with that is... Uh, I don't have a combinator handy. Let me just chuck one down here. Oh, here we go. So the anything signal... Whenever you're confused about it, just make sure you read this. Uh, it is false when there are no inputs. The everything signal is true when there are no inputs. And this is if any one signal meets the condition, and this is if every single signal meets the condition. Also, uh, what it doesn't explain here, which I've taken advantage of in a lot of places, I honestly don't know where you're supposed to read this, but if you output an anything signal, it'll only output the first signal um, from a list. So let's just put this here. We're going to take from this uh, red wire, so you can see all of those inputs. And it's taking all of those inputs there and only outputting one of them. And which signal it outputs is pretty arbitrary. That can be very useful sometimes. Number orbit? Oh, good call. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Fossil is moon orbit 685, which we can just copy from here, actually. And that goes here. And that goes here. So basically... Just a regular timer that switches off if we receive Moon Orbit 685. Cool, cool, cool. Should I still leave it at 5 minutes? As in, we can send a ship here every 5 minutes if it's asking for one? Hmm. Yeah, we've already got like three times the number of ships that we've got outposts. That's probably fine. Alright, anchor to Stromhurst. I think it's implicit since anything is singular versus everything slash each. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Let's go for Immersite Core Fragment, or Iridite Core Fragment rather, the fuzzy looking one. And that gets from the green wire, and this is from the red wire, and this time I won't forget, Planet Orbit 683. This is the one that we've seen active a lot lately, so maybe we'll see a test case here. Planet Orbit 683. Cool, cool, cool. So this one's running. You can see from the little light there that it's flickering, that the signal's going round and round in circles, um, that it's outputting. So we're up to 2.7k. T 
is at negative 15k, negative 14k. Once it's greater than zero, it will allow the time signal to go through. Uh, or rather, it would if we didn't already have a lot of erudite core fragments back at home. So yeah, I think that's working. Probably. Bonk. Victor Magnus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the CME is in seven and a half hours, so sit tight. Alright. Um, wait, was it Victor that was always looking for CMEs, or was that someone else? I think I got those mixed up. I don't know why I always bunk, it's just what I do now. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I got those mixed up. It's me? Oh, no, good. I was right. Fantastic. Alright, so I removed these two. I copied Planet Orbit 683 over here. And I checked that the core fragment was correct. Red wire goes here, green wire goes here. That all looks very good. See a measle, exactly. Exactly. A CME. Alright, so we've done Corsal Stromhurst. We're going to get Hermes one day, uh, probably. I think we've done everything in our home system, right? We've done Verb T. We've done Exorion. And we've done Moss Garden. Indeed. Cool, cool, cool. Oh. Are we empty on every type of core fragment? No, we're not. No, this is what's on the memory cell. Back at home. Other than the T signal. Maybe set the timer based on time to mine enough rather than transit time that might be a good idea we'll get to that once we're done physically setting these up okay uh so we've done stromhurst i believe the only one left is in the wexivis system we got spiriso and i can't remember if we did another outpost here yet i don't think so so first we're gonna go since we're even further away from Spiriso than Calidus is, our destination is... Is this not updating because we're auto-saving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that works. We're going to go to Foenestra now. And the very moment that we get to Foenestra, we're setting our destination to Spiriso Orbit. Up and true. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Research not still going burr. It's not going burr because... Oh, okay. It's not because of spice anymore. Uh, it's. I think it's actually just getting going again. Yes, indeed. We're looking pretty saturated on bio... biomass again. Uh, as predicted, it's going to keep making the cards that we don't need all that much. That such is train blocks, unless you're going to have like a, a signal somewhere to say that, no, no, it's fine, we've already got biocombustion data here, don't make any more. Speaking of which, I was going to put a tag here. Uh, Bioscience 4, fantastic. Um, but yeah, as you can see, Catalog 1 is waiting on biomechanical data and biochemical, which is here and here. Both of those are waiting on biomass, which we just got going much, much faster. 
as you can see. How much does a train load give us? It's two biomass per mechanical data, and it's what, 500? So 250 cards, only five stacks. For each... So we need, we need four train loads, or three more train loads, before we get a train load of biomechanical data. That's kind of rough. It's a very short trip, though. Um, and then... Biochemical data is actually twice as good, except we do need biochemical data to make other things. Ooh, it's saturated. Not quite. One more delivery of biomass here, and we'll get... We should get biochemical data dropped off here. So actually, it's just a few more train loads of biomass, I think. And you can see how quickly that's moving. But that's just to get our first train load of Catalog 1. Uh, the way I've got it set up, we also need Catalog 2 before we get... Uh, before we get any more broad insight, because that's a lot more efficient. And we need... Uh, we need broad insight here before... Sorry, we need broad Catalog before it makes... Uh, biological insight. The catalog also might get delivered here first, unless I lower the priority. I probably should, to be honest. Priority. Uh, what am I doing? Request priority negative one. Yeah, we should probably make this priority the lowest for all of these drop-offs. Make sure the prereqs get what they're looking for first. Uh, what am I doing? Request priority negative one. And request priority negative one. Your bioscience is missing inserters, it looks like. Oh, this lot. Well, that won't matter for a while. Do I have... I think there's a reason I don't have superior inserters up here. Actually, I've got a few. Did I start making them up here, or no? Oh, I did. I did. Okay. Let's crank it up a bit. I probably just haven't put them in the construction train because too many different stacks. Uh, we've got some room in here now that we're not carrying scaffolding. Let's do another constant combinator. And I'm pretty sure this needs to be connected here. Superior. Um, I think I've got room for a hundred each. Oh yeah, I've definitely got room for a hundred each. One hundred. One hundred. And one hundred. Fantastic. That should get built immediately. Was there anywhere else that was missing superior inserters? I don't think so. No, I think we're good. Train should be here in about two seconds. There we go. Fantastic. Yeah, this is going to be a lot faster now. Well, a lot faster than zero because I accidentally broke the supply of Vitamelange Spice earlier. Look at how quick that is. 
Meow. Holy. You don't even see it unload, it's that fast. And it's gone. Okay, it's not gone that fast. But with the stack size so small, the belts themselves chew up a lot. Ooh, I think this is it. I think this is when we get a train load of uh, biomechanical data. Four per second. So it should be about a hundred seconds plus change. Made my first fully automated rocket system for a planet. Planet request auto. Nalvis receive when it has space in the spaceport. Very nice. Very good. Alright, how much are we missing for... It's literally just bio uh, biomechanical data. It will take a long time to get a train load, though. At 3.36 catalogs per second... We're looking at 1488 seconds, 12, uh, 20, 25 minutes. That's not as bad as I was, as I was expecting. I probably measured that a while ago before I put beacons here or something. Gotta say, SE is so awesome, but good god, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we love it, but also... Let's go to Spiriso Orbit. Pardon me, just sorting out my drink. Okay. How long till we get to Spiriso? Four and a half minutes. Fair enough, I guess. What should we do in the meantime? Other than stare at our lovely bio builds. Oh, I think I will stare at this for a moment. We're so close now. About 26 seconds before a train is summoned to pick up these uh, data cards. Drink mute, <laughs> indeed. Beverage box. Fantastic. I need to... Um, I need to find another place to get some better TV emotes in, because I noticed the site that I was using, some of the emotes just don't work. Which is unfortunate. I'll just harass my cloud or damsel. See how they do it. Oh, we're so close now. Soon. There should be exactly enough to fill this up. Do what? Uh, just put in some better TV emotes. Uh, I added like four of them or so, but like only two of them work. Like Cat Jam. Who doesn't like a good Cat Jam? That's it. Our train should be coming. Yeah, it's one of those little things I keep forgetting. I should set a whole day aside for those things. If I can find a time. Oh, of course. <laughs> Of course biomechanical data would come here first. Oh no. Maybe I should make the catalogs a higher priority for the drop-off. I think I should. Just slightly above normal priority. 
Well, that's going to be a lot longer before we get our biomechanical data to where we wanted it. Emotes aren't working in the browser for better TV? Silly question, but did you add them to the channel in BTTV? I, I used, uh, what was it called? 7TV? Is there another step somewhere that I forgot about? How close are we here? 1 minute 25 seconds. Fantastic. We're in the system now. And that's it right there. That's Spiriso Orbit. Get out of here. Alright, uh, meanwhile, back at Hagen Orbit. We don't need to compare this to this. Which means... We can probably just pass all of this through unconditionally. Like this... This green wire just goes straight to this input here. I'm pretty sure. If red equals zero out, but everything... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like the actual input for this type of memory cell. Cool. Very cool. Actually. We can get rid of all of that. We're making it simpler and more robust. I love it. Uh, let's grab our construction... Actually... Oh, we've still got random stuff in here. It's fine. Um, go pick this stuff up. And... Then go empty and reset. 7TV and BTTV work the same way. You need to add emotes to your channel. Alright. And we're here. This is the last outpost, isn't it? That we haven't patched? I believe. Green goes here, red goes here, and beryl is the type of core fragment. Oh, and planet orbit is 816. I think this is the... it has to be planet orbit. Uh, I think this is the location that we send to most... Uh, that we've seen most often on that memory cell. There's Trying to send a ship here right now. Cool, cool, cool. And it should actually send a ship. Oh, um, I was wondering how we ended up with... I noticed like a negative 18k... One signal on the memory cells a while ago. I think it's going to get all of that removed. If it hasn't already. Hmm. Okay, okay. So, if that's on the memory cell... Oh, it's already... It just sent a ship. I believe. Iron Hall of 14 should be on its way to Spiriso. Yes, I think it is. Foenestra is where it's going to bounce off of. There it is, Planet Orbit 816. Which means that our timer should be running. It is running. It's working. So we've got zero barrel core fragments back at home. At least in orbit we, we've got zero. Where we're measuring it. Um, we've got tons of core fragments here. 
So we should be trying to request a ship. Which means the moment this counts down... The moment this counts down to zero, or up to zero rather, we should see it send another ship. And we can easily configure the maximum throughput for each outpost. Very nice. I had issues with BTTV not adding emotes to the Discord server though. I didn't know BTTV could do that. It's pretty easy to... oh, see for Kurt. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. Thanks for the raid, Sifa. And there's Veldak. Thank you. Rimworld. Nice. I should play some more Rimworld. I was actually thinking of uh, playing another game. Because I got a little burnt out on Terraria for now. Though I do love it. Um... And as much as I'm having fun with MechWarrior 5, I don't know. Oh, I I also finished Atrio last week. Or a few days ago. So, like, I'm kind of looking for space for two games. So maybe it'll be MechWarrior 5 and RimWorld for a while. Sifa told us to suggest the Ducky mod. What is the Ducky mod? Odaba, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I think this is all working now, and we no longer have, uh, we no longer have a dependency on a counting system that could get messed up somehow. Let's go home via Foenestra. Um, but I'm not done staring at this thing. Once that gets to another 5,000 ticks, which is uh, 83 seconds. Uh, once that gets to zero again, we're going to start requesting that a ship gets sent here. And considering the delay, however short, even if it's only like 10 seconds, at best, or at worst, um, we should probably, if we calculate how many core fragments per second an outpost can give us maximum, uh, and then if we know how long the ships take to get here, well no, we don't have to know how long the ships take to get here. We could set it we could set this delay based on how many ships per minute, or how many ships every X minutes, whatever, that we would need to take all of it. And... Give it a little bit of slack, so we're sending ships a... We're theoretically sending ships a bit faster than we need to take all of it. Has it been done with SEK2? When you have other mods installed, it includes all items from all mods? Wait, what? That is a rude mod. Rubber ducky. Let me click it real quick. Trusted link from Valdak. Um, a recipe that requires one of all cra... I do. That's... That's a lot. How many rubber duckies per minute can you sustain? Oh god. Oh no. I'm scared. How close are we to Foenestra? 1.8k out of 10k. Take care, Victor. Thanks for hanging out. Anyone else watched Dosh Doshington? New video on... Completing Factorio with every item on a sushi belt. Oh, that sounds like exactly my sort of thing. I love sushi. Su sushi belts, Uber Alice. 
Are we picking up more bio? We are. Fantastic. And we can see that the fluid pickup works as well. Nice video, saw it with Waffle. It do sound epic, indeed. Look at those trains go. Alright, the trains are clearly not having trouble keeping up with the biomass. But the biomass is kind of fast for now, though. Ooh, we've got almost... Almost maximum speed for biomass. Very good. Very good indeed. Oh, it's happening. No, it's not. That's contaminated cosmic water. What a tease. What a tease. Also, I kind of forgot that cosmic water was going to be one of those things that loops around. Uh, it gets recycled, so we don't have to have... Even though we need ludic ludicrous throughput for cosmic water in places, we're not going to need ludicrous initial creation of cosmic water to keep up with it. Or not as ludicrous, anyway. It's bloody nuts. You think you have seen Sushi Belt before? He will redefine that statement for you. Nice, nice. Uh, we are 7k out of 10k on the way to Foenestra. I need to find something to occupy my attention for like two minutes. This will probably do it. We should have... Huh? Oh, did I stop asking? I think I did. For the bio lab. Alright, let's squeeze it in here. Uh, two stacks. Fantastic. That should be enough to get this build finished. And when we come back, I think... We'll put the bio labs away again because we're not going to be needing them that often. It's unreal how we made a 30 belt lane equalizer. Oh god. Oh no. What madness has this rod? We need more speed modules. Um, on second thought, go straight back to the loader. And come back here again after that. See how that goes. Are uh, we at Foenestra? Let's go back to Hagen Orbit. Don't spoil it. Tiny Goliath, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If you got a spare 45 minutes, it's definitely worth a watch. Hmm, I guess there's a lot of visuals, so it's not the kind of thing you'd listen to in the background, right? I guess it depends. I'm really looking forward to seeing bioscience in the rail network, but, uh, but we have a lot of really, really big train loads of stuff that need to happen first. Oh, here we go. Here comes our train. Pretty much the second that we've got 500. Which way is it going? Oh, this is where we want. I love this naming convention. We can instantly see that this train is going to drop off biomass where it's going to turn into uh, biomechanical data. Exactly the thing I'm hoping for. But yeah, it's going to take like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven train loads of biomass to finish this still. Biomass be like. I'm really excited about our 
A spaceship system being updated though. Um, what's your problem? Oh! I believe this is the same bug as we've seen before, except it doesn't have a few core fragments. And bots that have... It hasn't kidnapped a few bots and it doesn't have a few core fragments left over. Huh. I wonder what the difference was. And do we have two ships stuck there, or... It's 15 and maybe number 10. I think there's at least three ships here. Oh boy. How about I just force you to land... here? And... This one's actually working normally. How many more do we have? It's getting harder to check on them. We need to find ones that are waiting to land at Hagen Orbit. This is number nine. This is number seven. Seven looks to be working just fine. I wish I could sort by destination. We need the ones that are at Hagen Orbit... Parked in orbit. Uh, number 11, number 10. Okay. 10 looks fine. And 11 looks fine. Hmm. And did that one that we parked get sent back into the system automatically? Wasn't it? I believe it did. Okay. So by delta V, which is 50, the Hagen orbit? Oh, true. Yeah, 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 you're right. Although baby ship, which is parked, has the same delta V. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Now, are we ever going to find out the reason that sometimes our ships launch, presumably from Hagen orbit, with a destination of Hagen orbit, I guess it just hasn't had its destination updated after it lands here. That would make a lot of sense. So if it somehow receives a launch signal... When, though? How would it receive a launch signal... Either right before it finishes unloading or right after it finishes unloading? If it had cables... That actually makes even less sense, because... There should be no way that the memory cell ends up with cables on it... ...without getting a destination. Because the cable signal comes from an outpost when the conditions are met that the outpost reports to central it includes a positive number of for example cables minus the number of cables it's actually got so that if we have less than 1.5k space elevator cables that gets included on the memory cell that also has uh, the destination, whether or not we're going via Foenestra, ammo, bots, space train, power packs. Um, so if it had a signal for space elevator cable, it should have had the destination.
I don't understand. I think... I'll, I'll check next time, but I'm pretty sure when I moused over this, it did have space elevator cable uh, on the memory cell. I could be wrong. Next time it happens, we'll have a closer look at that. Hopefully, somehow, with our updated system, we've fixed it without understanding how, and it'll never, ever happen again. Alternatively, instead of trying to um, that's not what I want. I want this where the other fancy belts are stored. Was it in here? There it is. Um, if it comes down to it, if I just can't figure out why it's doing that, I'm going to have to make a drop-off that, like, can accept all the core fragments. I really don't want to do that. Really, really don't want to do that. All right, let's assume our spaceships work and bioscience works. What would we work on next? Is that station picker window a mod? Station picker window? Station picker window... Uh, was I using it? When you have a train open. No, I'm, I think that's vanilla. As far as I know. Oh, it might be LTN or something, perhaps? Choose station. Oh, you can, like, click on it. I imagine this is vanilla. Clear up spaghetti research while waiting for the train research to fire up, I guess. Yeah, we're not going to need spaghetti anymore, right? Unless we really want to do some deep space science spaghetti, but I don't think so. Okay, first of all, I'm pretty sure I disabled... I did not. Um, disable all the drop-off stations here. We've already got something to get rid of the junk data cards. Um, I think I'll just set that a bit lower, get rid of those. Hmm. You know what? This is going to cause absolute havoc, but I think I'm going to do it. This is all one robo-network now. And we're going to move our copious storage. Uh, I might need another robo-port here, but I need to be careful about it. Okay, uh, so it's time to decon all of this. I think the first thing I'll decon is all of the L uh, logistic network chests. And some two buys lying around, I know. I think it'll be easier to just eyeball them. And I forgot that included storage chests. Oh, we should probably... Uh, you know what, just pick up all of this. Just get rid of it. Construction bots are going to be very, very busy for a while. You should probably remove all the requesters from there first. 
Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yay, indeed. Alright, it begins. And for some reason, the bots are trying to give me a bunch of... Well, a lot, actually. Um... How about I just drop modules? Drop all of this stuff. Turn off my RoboPort, that would probably help. Throw some more bots at it? We've already got... Uh, 500 construction bots. I think they're going to bottleneck on recharging already. They're going to be haloing around most of our roboports as it is. So I'll probably just leave that. I definitely want to bring all of... Oh, wow. I guess I already picked up a bunch of catalogs. Uh, among other things. I was literally going to make requests for these, but... I think the first thing I'll go do is drop some of those off. Actually, there's kind of no point... Uh, I'm not going to use them for anything else. Biological catalog. Actually goes into a few things. Hmm. I kind of don't want to put them into... Uh, into this build that is going to get exactly 5,000 of each of these from train drop-offs. Oh, that's actually a problem that I haven't solved yet, because these things tend to pick up one or the other... And then we end up with, like, two items on a belt somewhere or something. And then... It takes an entire other train load to trigger another delivery over here. You know what? This would probably solve that problem. Just a few catalog ones. Why not? Just make sure Catalog 1s are ahead of Catalog 2. That would keep the recipes balanced. Could put them in the train loaders. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I'm just going to shift C real quick. And shift C over here. Fantastic. That's definitely going to throw off some train loads, but whatever. Maybe I should have put it back up here. It's probably fine. It's not that big of a deal in the end. Oh, did we just bottleneck on trying to put these on the belt? No, that shouldn't be happening. It did ha what the what how are two superior inserters not keeping up with ten bioculture per recipe? They're taking five each. Okay, okay, I see how it is. Uh, read hand contents hold. Yeah, hold, I think. Don't enable disable. Oh, do enable disable. Um, enable disable. Everything equals zero. And they should take turn. They should take turns. That is not what's happening. Um, anything greater than zero. But then we need one of them to work. Um, make this one unconditional. No? 
how do I... I want them to alternate, but they're going to send a signal the nanosecond they pick one up, right? I could make this one... Hold on. This one unconditional and this one everything equals zero? That's... No. I feel like this is really simple and I'm getting confused. Or it's actually hard without a combinator. Or impossible. Add two more and that's it. Loader. Add two more and that's it. Um, no, but they should be able to pick up the entire recipe each, right? Since they're only picking up uh, biocultures, they should be able to take turns picking up ten at a time, instead of this five at a time, each side nonsense. Hmm. Uh. If culture equals ten. Why is this one only picking up five at a time? Stack size is 12. Recipe produces 10. Oh, the stack is limited to five. God damn it. I assume they can only pick up a single stack at a time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Da Danis? Danis? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. In that case... Uh, we probably really do just need more of them. That's kind of crazy. They swing at a rate of 1296 degrees per second. That's 3.6 swings per second. This makes less than 30 per second. Uh, one swing takes ten. Like, one swing from both of these takes ten. Ten, twenty, thirty. And then more. It should be able to keep up. I don't get it. I did see a little bit of red just here. But I think that was while this was yellow anyway. Oh, does this need to go faster? Wow. Don't tell me a superior inserter can't keep up with the... No, it should be able to. How many does this take? Ten per recipe. I think... I think, ironically, if we lower the stack size for this, it's going to be a lot more reliable. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly keeping up. Instead of going 12, and then it gets to a point where it's like, oh, there's too many genetic data cards, I'm not going to bother to swing, and then falling behind after it waits. This is putting in exactly enough for one recipe each time. Funny how that works. First world problem, indeed. Some recipes have strange behavior since they produce more than a stack at a time. You can't uh, can't make the produce all the time. It actually is. Did that actually fix it? That's really strange, even though it looked like an output problem. That actually solved it. Hmm. I like how the, the one superior inserter is just fast enough. That's pretty neat. It's still flashing output full. 
Yeah, but it's like imperceptible almost. Well, let's see what it looks like if I make another one of these. Why do I have... I don't have a space belt on me. Oh. I'm borrowing this. Uh, yeah, that's actually... No, it does look like it's taking turns. That actually looks cool. That actually looks really cool. That's faster, indeed. I guess the, um... That doesn't quite make sense. If the... If this thing is just fast enough, like exactly as fast as it needs to be, and it's putting in 10 per swing per recipe, And these two were taking out ten, five each, and they're the same speed. Shouldn't have been a problem. Doesn't it take time to drop the items? That might actually be it. Yeah, you're right. I think that's it. Alright, construction trains swing by here. Wait for passenger present. You've basically removed the swing and drop time. Yes. I love how those are synced up though. That's cool. And I'm pretty sure like that's a pattern that'll re-emerge organically as well. Or something like it? Nope. That's different. I think if we stop giving it inputs... It takes a surprisingly long time to stop. And then do this again. Huh. That's kinda neat, still. They're outputting together, but obviously they can't um, finish together. But I think that's 100% uptime now. The, the status bar seems to start here. Cool, cool, cool. Where's our train? What the hell is going on here? Uh, why do you have... Oh, no. Um, I think we need to... I think... I think we need to wait at the emptier. No, 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 no. Go to the emptier. Without construction trains while all of this is happening. Did we get that belt at least? No. Alright. Don't get run over. Uh, I guess the sooner we ride the train back, the sooner the bots will sort themselves out. Unless we wait here for like 20 minutes. Maybe changing factory status screws it up, so you just need one extra output to break the cursed cycle. I don't know. Oh, wait, we need to go here and wait indefinitely. No, 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 go to the emptier. God damn it. Go to the emptier. Right, so that'll have to wait until we're done here, which could be a minute, considering we have 50,000 military tech cards alone.
I do have a system in place here to offer anything that we've got 150 stacks of to the robot network as a high priority pickup. So most of that, like up to a point, that'll get sorted out automatically. We're obviously going to end up with a bunch of stuff in here that is um, less than desirable. Like random biomass. And also bio insights. And also material science. And how many rocket te uh, I'll check later. I'm just going to go drop off these. I should probably wait until it's done. There's going to be all sorts of things. Add a couple of roboports to speed up charging? Sure. Alright. Can I get the list of mods on this game? Indeed you can. Type mods or scroll down. Le Lesiux de Soya. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we drop biomass over here. We drop bio insight. Probably just straight into research. Actually, did it drop go straight into the machine? I kind of want to put it on the sushi belt. Fantastic. Uh, combustion data, material catalog. Why do we have so many material catalog? Did I request them? Nope. Anyway, um, shift C that. Get this little bit of spice out of my inventory. We've got hot thermo dynamics data. Have we gotten the supercharger yet? I don't. No, actually. Oh. Actually, yes. I think I remember finding that out earlier. But apparently we still haven't made any. Let's make a couple of stacks. Alright, catalog ones go in here. Hot thermodynamic starter can also go in here. And what is this? Pressure pressure containment data. Sure. We've got some material one lying around. And... Is that pretty much everything for the moment? Random lithium chloride goes here. Cleaning up the base. Oh, we're out of fertilizer. That's probably be limited. Oh no no this is the old fertilizer location that I changed my mind on. Glad I swung by here. I don't have enough space to fix it. Um, we'll just do this the old-fashioned way with a jetpack. Albion Line, good to see you again. Welcome welcome, hope you're doing well. Go grab the rest of the fertilizer. There we go. 
Oh, and that should probably be limited to 50 stacks. Okay, fertilizer goes here. Fantastic. I've got random scrap. I don't feel like fixing right now. That's a lot of spice. I don't think we're bottlenecked on spice or extract now. Not even a little bit. Crudoxcro? I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the follow. Uh, we're back to being bottlenecked on... On what? Bio sludge. That's not too surprising. In fact, that is 100% what I was expecting. Since we caught up on Vitamelange. How's our... Oh, we didn't get all the speed modules here yet. Go park there for a sec. Let's double check. Bio... Matter? How's our bio matter doing? It's pretty consistent. And... Number go up. So right now we're averaging 3k per minute. Um, which is going to increase a little bit because we just put some more speed modules in. Assuming we don't have an input issue, which we probably won't because they only need uh, 512 petroleum per second. Which is actually a little bit. But suffice to say, biomass, no, biomatter. Should be getting ever so slightly faster. 3k per minute translates to what in terms of bio sludge? Per minute. Uh, oh, it's actually like one to one. Wait, no, it's not. It's a digit off. 10 biomatter makes one bio sludge. That's kind of sad. So, 300 per minute. That's not so good. But I'm pretty sure, just like last playthrough, once we hit a certain critical mass, um, and contaminated bio sludge is looping around, coming back as bio sludge. Yeah, it might already be starting to happen, even. Wait, why, why was that output full? Are these broken? Uh, only insofar as maybe we need more pumps to move them quickly? Oh no, this... No, that's right. Products finished. Hundreds. Thousands. Tens of thousands. This one in particular doesn't go as fast. I think we just need more pipe to make the most of it. Like, bring this up here, over this way, perhaps. If we can somehow fit that in. Just barely. Do you have any prints for those rails? I do indeed. You can find it on the Discord. Danes? Or Dennis? Danes, I guess. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Overclock, good to see you again. Hello, sir. How's the space treating you? Pretty well for now, actually. Pretty well, I think. We are getting faster and faster with bioscience. And here comes our first, uh, our first train load of Catalog 1. Unfortunately, we also need Catalog 2 before we automatically get insight. Did I lower the priority in this? I did. 
yeah, there's still a lot before it saturates. Oh, it's actually happening faster than I thought. Very cool. So these th these four builds here are for catalog two. That, that's like half full, that's like a third full, half full. And this one is a bit of a special case because it needs to go up here as well. Cool, cool, cool. What should we work on in the meantime? I guess I should, um, go to some old out... Oh, what the... That's Orbit. I guess I should go to some old outputs and, uh, update them to the new system. I'm not really looking forward to that. Honestly, that's the kind of busy work I should probably do off-stream. It's quite repetitive. It wouldn't be as difficult to update Muir. Still not that interesting. I think we can... I think we can find something a bit more entertaining, shall we say. How's our sp how are our spaceships doing? I really want to know. Uh, let's sort by Delta... Oh, that's a lot. We have a lot of ships waiting to land at Egan Orbit right now. Which probably means... Oh. Here's the bug. I was going to say it probably means things are going quite well, and that still holds true, except... At least one of these is bugged. Two of them are bugged. I'd really like to know how we end up with a memory cell on the ship that has space elevator cable and also moon orbit 21 something? Wait, what? Moon Orbit 21 something. I don't think we have an outpost. With that address. That's probably why the destination says Hagen Orbit. Because it's getting given... Hmm. Uranium fuel cell 30. How much do we usually try to put in there? Uranium fuel cell 30. So... It doesn't sound like... Based on the uranium fuel cell signal... It doesn't sound like it's somehow doubling up on receiving whatever's on this memory cell. Well, no, this goes through in a different spot. Okay. That might... If R is greater than zero, output uranium... Yeah, one tick after it's reset, it receives the uranium fuel cell request. So that gets put on separately, which means if it receives what's on this memory cell twice, somehow. I think that's what's happening. Based on the fact that... Its destination is moon orbit approximately 2.1k, like 2100 and something. Uh, I think it's probably trying to go to like verb T or somewhere. It could be anywhere though, like, I don't know if the bug is... I'd seriously doubt actually that the bug is related to a specific location. Then again, 321 cables... Oh. 
420 cables. So they were, either, they were either sent at different times or sent to a different outpost. Or were supposed to be. But since... If it got doubled... What's on this memory cell? Um... I think it must be trying to go somewhere in system because that's what we would get if it was trying to double, well, moon orbit 1176 would be too high. It would say 2.3k, right? So I think it specifically has to be moon orbit 11, at uh, 1001, moon orbit 1170. Huh. I don't think... I don't think Moon Orbit 2100 and something... Is any of our outposts addresses times two. I think it's somehow getting added to... Hagen Orbit, probably. Which is a bit strange to say the least. Um, let's look at these outposts, the address. 685... This will be, like, almost the same. 683, that's planet orbit anyway. We know what those are. We just looked at them. And planet orbit 816. Hmm. So what's supposed to happen when it lands is, first things first, it gets its memory cell reset. We get green signal, and then one tick later we get red signal, if the ship just arrived. If green is greater than red, send R for reset on the red wire. Maybe it's like... I have my doubts about this, but what if, with the way Spaceship works, there's a quirk where, like, the memory cell doesn't necessarily exist yet. I have my doubts about that, because if we're receiving the S signal, surely it's, like, recreated all of this, right? The S signal gets received pretty much instantly. Yeah, it's always outputting to green. So, like, the tick after, like, as soon as possible, on this green wire, we've got S. And then one tick later, two ticks later, we're sending a pulse for R. Even if there was, like, a weird flicker sometimes with how these are put together, which I doubt. You would imagine it would clear itself up in two ticks. Also, let me just check something. Find me a ship that's coming back. There we go. This does not have its request for 30 uranium fuel cells. Okay then. So that means if this got cleared, well, whether or not this got cleared, when it lands, it should have uranium fuel cell on it. Mm. All of these are the same, right? Pretty sure. Lith 
Campus Liuta. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So two ticks later, we output R for reset. That goes to the memory cell. Memory cell gets reset. One tick later, uh, it receives uranium fuel cell. Which is happening when the bug happens. Which is... Hmm... I have my doubts if... I have my doubts whether we've still got stuff here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, when the ship is on its way back, it shouldn't have cables on the memory cell either. Probably. Let's find an inbound ship. Um, you, sir. Destination Haven Orbit. So it's got Hagen Orbit, and it's got, um, like, the adjustment to the anchor-to-target left clamp signal. So it doesn't have a cable signal. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we would have adjustment to target clamp ID on these bugged ships. If, um, if it was somehow not wiping that, and then it was adding stuff to it. I'm gonna go, even though the 2.1k doesn't quite seem to make sense, I'm gonna go with the theory, the working theory, that somehow this information is getting sent to it twice. Now, how would that happen? Would it be maybe only the ones that are going to... not Foenestra? Well, that should happen all the time, if it was happening. Okay, so here we've got a pulse generator. Whatever's on the memory cell... goes into both of these at the same time. What's with that crisscross? Wait, what? Oh, this goes to this one. Okay. Uh, both of these receive this input at the same time. If red is... Yeah, red signal is equal to zero, it's going to output everything to this guy. And then if any signal is detected, output one red. Yeah, yeah this outputs everything. And then this guy says... If anything equals zero... Output red. So one tick later, this... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say I should probably test this, which seems like a good idea anyway. But, like, again, it's an intermittent problem. I seriously doubt this bit's wrong. Oh, right. All of our construction bots are busy. I, I seriously doubt a little bit like that is wrong. Like, if it was sending through two ticks, then every single ship would get messed up. But we'll confirm it anyway. So we're gonna give it... Memory cell down here. Unconditional. And then some input. And then that should just hold on to 47, even if this keeps inputting. And just to prove that that memory cell is working properly, if we give it an input of info signal, that number keeps going up. So we know our pulse generator works. Um, now, is it possible that it's, like, also sending everything through here? 
If foe and astro equals zero, output everything input count. Each greater than zero, output each input count. But don't send these signals. So, yes? If we're not going via foe and astro? I'm pretty sure all of the bug chips I've seen haven't had a foe and Estra destination on the memory cell. What I'm confused about now, because it sounds like I've found the problem. Is... Shouldn't this be messing our ships up all the time. If I accidentally pulsed everything through here, oh, that's on red, that's on green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I accidentally pulsed everything through here and pulsed everything through here, then like every single ship that's not going by a foe and Astro should have this problem. But that's not what's happening. Um, this goes through on the red wire, which goes to the memory cell input. And on the green wire, that's going to go straight to the console. And then... Hold on, where's our memory cell? This one. No, this is the memory cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... red wire is input. Okay. Output from the console... goes to here. That shouldn't interfere with the memory cell at all. There's nothing but the memory cell itself and the red wire that inputs to the memory cell. So even if there was some some strange quirk or programming error that we hadn't anticipated from this other stuff we added, it has no way of getting to the memory cell. If not phone Estra output everything except for this stuff. on the green wire that goes straight to the console. And if foe and Astra output anomaly one to the console. That's just our these are just our destination. But it's the destination that's getting messed up. We're taking straight from the output here. from the memory cell. Is there... No, there shouldn't be. We're taking from the green output from the memory cell. So... Unless we saw the memory cells themselves over here having the wrong data, which I've never seen happen. Where's our destination? Oh, oh, oh. 2.1k. What? What, what, what? What happened here? Oh, that's, uh, that's not supposed to, okay. That's not supposed to input straight to the memory cell. It's supposed to input to this part that does like a pulse generation, uh, into the memory cell. Whoops. 
But we didn't make that mistake before. Let's empty it. It still says 2.1k. Uh, I think I just realized something. I think... I think I messed up the timing on these. I think it was adding two destinations together, but it's not Hagen Orbit and something else. It's like two of our moon outputs. And I think we have like one destination that's a planet orbit. Which is why, if I recall correctly, we've never seen planet orbit on the memory cell when it's messed up like that. Moon orbit. Moon orbit. Moon orbit. Moon orbit. And that's a planet orbit, actually. Okay. Advanced fuel on my locomotives. More speed, indeed. Wasn't there like an outpost at 1001? Indeed. Add that to Haven orbit and you get 2.1k. Uh, oh yeah, I think you're right. But yeah, the problem we've got right now... Uh, because I made a mistake patching the new ones, is I'm pretty sure I gave, I, I forgot to adjust these. So a bunch of them have the same timing, so they're adding up. I think probably all of them have between 20 and 25 ticks, or 20 to 24, no, 21 to 24 ticks. On the shared signals. I'm pretty sure I didn't mista make mistakes with those before, but. Well, let's go through in order as we've got them here. We'll start with Corsal Orbit. That is less than five, so that one should still work. Stromhurst orbit, uh, greater than 5, less than or equal to 10. I said 10. I s what happened to my numlock? 10. There we go. Uh, greater than 5, but less than or equal to 10, as opposed to less than 5. I guess we could do less than or equal to 5. Technically, we shouldn't need any leeway between those, because they should all have the same timing. Oh! They don't have the same timing. This one has one fewer combinator. Except I had it set to less than 5, as opposed to less than or equal. So it shouldn't, it probably shouldn't matter. But that might be the reason. And that would explain why it doesn't happen often. If all of these outposts, except for one... Thank you. If all of these outposts, except for one, go through two combinators, which take one tick each... For the signal to pass through. And then our logic is time signal, you know, is within a certain range. Then the one outpost that only has one combinator for these has the signal arriving early. By one tick. So I'm going to say for this one, it has to be greater than 5, and then less than or equal to 10. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should do the less than or equal to afterwards. Because when it ticks over... Well, I'm pretty sure back at base we've got the timer set. We should set it a bit higher. Maybe the problem started when I set this super low as well. Let's just set it to like 600. Mm. That's 10 seconds, that's not much. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm having trouble visualizing it or, or imagining it, but... Um... There might also be an issue when it rolls over up the top. But more importantly, if this was set to like less than or equal to 5 as opposed to less than 5 earlier, and then the next one was set to um, greater than 5, and that other one was getting it a tick earlier than this one, then they could have overlapped. So theoretically, if we fix this now, problem should go bye-bye. Right? Right, right. So this one is greater than 10. Less than or equal to 15. I could put a bit more of a gap between them. Like, I'm pretty sure literally one tick would be sufficient to send this stuff. And we could put them super close together if we want to, but like... If we're going to give them five ticks each just to try and be safe, why don't I set it to like... Time equals something precise. Like exactly... 5, 10, 15, and so on. Right? It only has to send it through for one tick. And this part is going to be on the same timing no matter how we look at it. I think I will do it that way. Yeah, we don't need this combinator. It's going to make it a bit easier to, like... ...to keep track of where we're at as well. Like, it's just kind of easier than thinking of a range, I think. Alright. So... First outpost is going to be set to... ...time signal equals 5. Output everything. Or output the time signal. Come to think of it, we could remove this combinator because I could set this to something precise. So we're down... We can remove two combinators from most of our outposts. If time signal equals five, you can send everything through. That also means... Uh, they're all going to have the exact same number of combinators that this goes through. So next outpost... Oh, it has to be linked to this red wire as well. If time signal equals 10... I am suffocating. Send the speedy train. Where's the speedy train? Oh, I left it down here. Okay. Um. Uh. I'm suffocating. Fuck here. Wait for passenger present. I saw take five. 
Nani? What is this? What is this? Uh, this is reprogramming our spaceship dispatch. Kano, not slip nip. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, sure, pick that up. Go for it. All right. Um, we're probably going to mess up some more ships while we're editing this, but it'll be easy to fix it. Easy enough, anyway. Okay, so that needs to connect to this red wire as well. If time signal equals five. And then if time signal equals 10. I'm 99% sure that if we were to set these to like 1 and 2 and so on, it would work perfectly. But I just want to be super safe, especially after all of this uh, trouble. If time signal equals 15. That's that one. If time signal equals 20. If time signal equals 25. And then... Uh, I think that's the only one left, right? If time signal equals 30. I think that fixes it. Toot 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 ti toot. What? 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 Marsh? Not sure what you're on about, but welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Interesting how you how your spaceship set up. Do they each have a designated route? Nope. The opposite. Or a designated resource they carry? Nope. Or are they generic like LTN? Yes, that's the idea. Um, so let's look at our memory cell. I think we need to clear that. Standing in for song request. Okay. Um, and we don't need to change anything here. This is all perfectly fine, I'm pretty sure. I might need to clear a memory cell if it's got a weird thing on it still. Looks like we're good for now. And this one is a total mess. So now... That's definitely Exorion Orbit. And it looks to be working. So you can see just barely the flickers. Uh, one tick of... some of the outposts requesting. And it cycles every 10 seconds, which is way more than we need, honestly. Didn't we stop at, like, 30 or something? Let's set this to 60. So every second it's going to cycle. And you can see the... Just barely, you can see one tick of... Oh, I can tell which outpost that is, because I can see Foenestra. You can see a couple of outposts are requesting, but we've already got something in the memory cell, so we're ignoring it. Um, now we just need to get our busted ships back in action. Which should be as simple as... Parking them... like so. I wonder, okay, if that's the problem that we had before, 
then why did we sometimes have... Huh? Wait, what? Oh, it was setting the request for... Barrel core fragments? Wait, what? Don't, I'm pretty sure we don't do that till we get there. doesn't have the barrel core fragments. I could have sworn I saw barrel core fragments here. Okay, um, let's get more ships moving. Coronal mass ejection headed for Hagen orbit in only six hours. Panic. Alright, this one's empty so we can put it anywhere. This should be fine. And the same is going to go for... Probably most, if not all, of these. I don't know how or why, but so far it looks like when we updated the system, we got rid of the part of the bug where they end up with kidnapped bots and some core fragments. I think it might just be a coincidence. Probably. Is that the last one? Not even close. I'm not surprised that all of these ships got messed up as we were playing with our system. That makes complete sense. And it actually lends more credibility to what we think went wrong. The fact that we're asking for this many more space elevator cables suggests to me that, yeah, it's a little bit of a problem that our ships haven't been moving. Um, where can we drop you off? Over here. Fantastic. I have a feeling we're not going to need as many ships now. Still got... You're probably working just fine. Yes, yes you are. Okay, who else is stuck in orbit? You're fine. You're probably not fine. Oh, this one's launching? Perfect. Alright, so this one should be fine. Yes. That's number nine. Number eight is landed. Number seven needs help. Number five? Do we not have a number six? Oh, it's the distance filter. Uh, number five also needs help. Oh, they're probably leaving with a bunch of space elevator cables because they were already carrying them. We should have more than enough slack, like extra storage space at the outposts, for that to sort itself out. I was going to say it. Didn't really think we would have gone through that many space elevator cables that quickly. Good thing all I have to do is anchor these things to get them fixed. And this might be the last one. Cool, cool, cool. Neat. I always wanted to set up something like this, but never really got into complex spaceships. They're so late in the tech tree, all my logistics are already set when I get to them. They do have some big advantages, though. Um, I think it's worth the effort of replacing the interplanetary and especially interstellar logistics that you may already have in place. Alright, what do we got? Landed, uh, I think 9 is the one with the uh, four fragments, it's working properly, uh, and that's it. I think we fixed it. Why do you have... oh, that makes sense, actually. 
that does make sense. Bots are still doing their thing. Yay, indeed. What's this flashing? Oh, it's just a bot hovering with coal fragments. That's fine. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, as a matter of fact. Why are these here? They'll get taken back to the mall, but I am very curious as to how we got random heat shield here, for example. Alright, let's look at our memory cell up here. That's Ixorion Orbit. Ooh! That didn't occur to me. If we set a precise time signal for when these things are allowed to send their time shared information through, if we memorize uh, which time signal represents which outpost, um, we can just say 15, that's Exorian Orbit. Nice. Very nice indeed. Um, I think I would like to put this on manual. Creep it forward ever so slightly. And just leap that that's... That's not what I had in mind. Also suffocating, not quite what I had in mind. Might have to... Might have to disable these for the moment. Or I could just set this to disallow. That works. I'm sure we'll notice quite quickly, even if I forget when we're putting that back. Alright. They, they're getting there. Slowly. Little by little. Nice. Well, I am feeling really good about this, uh, this patch to the spaceships. Like I said, it's not as good in some ways, but I think the advantages are preferable. Even if we fixed the old version. Because we don't need any arbitrary signals to represent each outpost at all. We can do n number of outposts with this. The only messing about that it needs. Apart from when you're setting up an outpost, you need to give it an, a, a unique time when it's allowed to send information. Which we had to do anyway. Um... We just have to set a separate cooldown for each outpost for when it's allowed to request another ship. But I think, uh, honestly, if we just set it to five minutes per ship per outpost, it'll probably work itself out. Probably. Uh, maybe a larger number would be better while we have the first generation ships that are quite a bit slower than the future ones are going to be. Now I just hope that we never see ships taking off while there's still core fragments inside and kidnapping bots. I guess uh, if that does happen, they're not going to be stuck in Hagen orbit though. They're probably just going to go to the outpost. We might not even notice. I was at the store, brought some potato salad. It cost 69 Czech crowns. Muhihi. Is there a joke in there? Or, or, are, or are you just saying nice? 
I feel like there's a check joke in there somewhere. Pretty nice indeed. Um, also, why is this? Why is this? Just the number? <laughs> okay. But Veldak's always doing check jokes, so you gotta watch out. Okay, what do I want to do next? Well, honestly, I want to witness my spaceships never ever having problems again. But that's gonna take time. That is going... Ooh, there's a train on the way here. Uh, what? It's here to pick up bio catalog, but it seems to think we have more than we did. Okay, and what are you looking for? More bio catalog. Oh, that's tier two. Sure. And that did work. In fact. For some reason, it left one broad catalogue. There's also some bio-insight lying around. Oh, is this going to happen, like, multiple times because we're picking these things up bit by bit? Might do. Technically, watching them never make a mistake takes infinite time. <laughs> Indeed. It's really just slowly increasing your confidence that... Oh, this was probably sent before I picked up those insights myself. You may go. Yeah, it's probably that traffic jam because of that bug there. Ooh, bioscience is happening. Uh, minor detail. I never, I never did the bio scrubber build. Let's do that. That's a nice clear goal. That happens on the ground, right? In advanced chemical plant. I could do it right next to Vitalik at nah, I feel like we're going to have to go faster with Vitalik Acid at some point. So I think I'd rather leave this here. Um, what if... We're not going to have the belt space for this, I don't think. Oh, one column is 48 per second for three materials each. That's kind of fast. So we definitely need two belts, and that's with purple belts. That's 31 scrubbers per second, times four. 126 per second. Um, except we're like one tile short, or two tiles short. If I wanted to... oh. It has no fluid output. It has no fluid output. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move those in a bit. And probably have just enough space to do it the way I want to do it here. Um, how about we just delete you? We need a requester. And we need three solids. Um... We can do two train loads of each, that should be fine. Yeah, 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 two train loads of each. Yeah, 
each column once. Oh. Wait a sec. That is slightly more than a purple belt can supply for a half belt of each thing. It's exactly one to one. Mm, I want to try something that I don't think will work, but it has a chance to be very cool. And that's that's the important thing when you think about it. Let's just remove this for now. Uh, remove all of that. Remove all of that. And... How fast is our fluid consumption? 2.8k per second. I have a feeling we're not actually going to need this many bioscrubbers. That's two and a half stacks per second as well. Oh, and also... One stack of glass, two stacks of steel, four stacks of coal per second. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna just do, like, 12 machines here. I think that's overkill enough. However... We're gonna proceed with... Testing the idea that I had. For science. So we're gonna have, uh... Half belt. I need purple. We're going to have a half belt of output. Or whichever resource. Let's say coal. And we're going to have 50-50. Of the other two resources. What are we looking for? Glass and iron plate. Glass, iron plate. So we're going to have a half belt for those as well. And using sushi magic. We're going to do 50-50 input for those two on the inside belt, on half a belt. And the ratio is exactly one to one to one for each resource. But I'm pretty sure what's going to happen is total disaster. Pretty sure. And we don't actually need a container like this for testing purposes. Um, so this can be coal. This can be glass and iron plate. And then I want... That's on the wrong side. Is this right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do... Glass. Oops. Iron plate. Bring them together. Just like that. And I'm like 99% sure it's going to jam. This is why you do a sushi loop with these things. Because the machines won't take from them evenly or predictably, ultimately. But I think it's worth a try. Uh, that's not iron plate, it's steel plate.
No. Okay, fine. I'm gonna cut this. Put it over here for now. Steel plate. Steel plate. Delete it all. Put it back. And then... Why didn't that work? Oh, it did. It's just not showing it properly. Actually, I don't think cut and paste works with these. Oh, it does. That's weird. Could have sworn I remembered seeing that not work. I forgot we need to output. Um. Oh yeah, look at how messed up that is already. Actually... Oh, it might continue to work. It might not be perfect, but... How much is this again? Slightly more than half a belt of coal. It might not be perfect, but... When this thing takes glass, this thing could take steel. Except this thing keeps taking steel first. It'll always be able to keep going, which means theoretically it'll pick up this steel eventually, but it doesn't seem like it's actually ever going to do that. Because this one keeps taking... Yeah, when it goes to a new recipe, this goes for coal first. I wonder if... If we swap the sides of the belt here... That's that's the opposite of what I wanted to do. Cool, cool, cool. That's fine. If we sort the sides of the belt, does this inserter prefer to pick up what is closer to it? No, it seems to... Uh... Yeah, that actually seems to work better. They all seem to be going full speed as well. Which I thought was impossible. We need 48 coal per second. And this is 90 per second. Half belt of coal is 45. So how is the last machine always going at... Oh, we caught it. It's not quite going at full speed. Uh, but yeah. That actually worked better than expected. Hmm. Your belt foo is strong? Thank you. Alright. Something to consider if you have just the right recipe. As long as the thing you're doing 50-50 of on the half belt here can also be picked up from here or somewhere else. Because it'll sort itself out eventually, as long as it can keep taking all its inputs. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's go ahead and... Just build a more sensibly paced bioscrubber build. It's gonna only be like 1.5 stacks per second. 1.25? Would it be possible for one per lane for each? And then a triple mix for the spare lane? 
Hmm. It would? Yeah, I think you're right. It'd be tricky. I don't know how to do... With splitters and stuff, it's... Once you figure it out, like, once, once you grok that, it's relatively easy to do 50%, 25%, 12.5%, you know, anything that's power 2. But getting 1 to 1 to 1 for 3 resources might be a bit trickier. I guess you'd have to deliberately leave a gap, which might defeat the purpose. Jay, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Xe, welcome also. Alright, let me just put the station in the usual spot this time. And what are we out for? Bioscrubbers? Each of these individually gives 5.2 per second. Let's use superior inserters. Fantastic. I think we showed that with the upgraded uh, belts. Not belts. Uh, upgraded stack sizes. These things can handle quite a bit. So what's our throughput for input? 96 per second each. That's more than a purple belt. Uh, that's... That might be still a bit overkill. What if we break it down to like... Less than one purple belt for each input. Um, maybe a little bit more? How about that? Less than half a purple belt each? Rather? Yeah. I don't really want to make each of them... Wait, what's 48 times 3? 144. It's definitely doable with a couple of belts of sushi, but like, nah. I think I'd rather just keep it under half a belt for each resource and just do a straight purple belt down this way. And like so. Actually, that one can train stops in the way. How about we do the split belt up here? Because that's going to fit together better compared to like that or something. And then so what are we looking for does it matter which one I put where probably not let's put coal glass steel plate And like so. How much do we need individually? Eight per second each. Uh, I hope the one taking from half belts can keep up. Superior long. Like so. One, two, three, four, five, six. How about this? Five, six. Hmm. 
And then what? What's it going to look like with T9s? Remember when I would take the time to see what a build would look like with tier 9s? I think most of the time we're just going to have to redesign them if we want to. Well, a lot of the time we're not going to need to, but if we do, we do. It's not worth worrying about. But I'm kind of curious. We can do a lot more speed when it comes to tier 9, I think. Negative 80%. Negative 80%. Still negative 80%. High tier efficiencies at OP. That's plus 300. And that's it. Minus 80. So how fast is this? Um, hold on. So it was 40 per second in for each and 26.4 out. This becomes 126. 140 per second each. Yeah, we're obviously going to need a lot more belt or just use fewer machines when we get to that. Okay. Uh, only three inputs means we can test it this way. I think I'll do the fluid input like this. How fast do we consume that? 1.2k per second. Yeah, I think that's more than enough. Uh, for like half a rail block. Should probably have it going through two pieces of pipe. Don't love the way that looks, though. How about... this? I don't love that either. Uh, something like that. It's not so bad. And then... Do I want to move this in a bit? Which would look neater. What's our output again? 52 per second. Let's use purple. And 5.2 per second each. No. That's going to be a bit different. I think I'd rather have it sort of line up with the way we can't. That's the thing. Just do it this way. Alright then. Test input. And test input, set filters blacklist on the inserters, detect what's in their chest, shift right, shift left, and I don't think the inserters can keep up. I don't think it's that the inserters can't keep up. I think it's we need like we need it to go a little bit more than the bare minimum in each container. So we're going to go like negative 100 or something. Perfect. Perfect. And holy crap, that was fast. Let's see how fast this is. Actually, are we ever going to pick up bio scrubbers in a short train? 
Because I might want to put a splitter on this one. Advanced tech card. I haven't decided yet. Now we'll probably do a double drop off for that. Prod 5. I think we'll do a double drop off for that. Uh, we are doing a single drop off for Bioscience 2. Well, that answers our question. We'll just do it this way. Now, how long does it take to fill this up? Advanced chemical plants go burr. Isn't fewer machines better with high prod modules to save UPS? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's pretty decent. And because of the high demand, I think it would be better to just have another block or half block if we want to go faster with this. Provide stack threshold 100. Short trains allowed. Scrubs. And now we just do our requester stuff. We need Vitalic Acid. I might request more than usual because 1.2k per second, kind of fast though. So we'll ask for 1.8k. I mean 180k. So that the trains could keep up with it, assuming we have the Vitalic Acid in the first place. And we've already done these filters. Fantastic. Let's reduce the amount of belt we have. A little bit. And maybe here as well. Alright, so we're requesting metallic acid, coal, steel plate, and glass. It goes to an advanced chemical plant, and out pops scrub. And then we just need to do the requests for those solids. Uh, I think I said two train loads of each. Should be fine. 10k for coal. Actually, it's consuming them at the same speed. So maybe we should bias it stackwise towards the coal a little bit more. 80 coal per second is 1.6 stacks. Um... So if we go like a train load plus plus what? I want it to have like a minute at least. 80 times 60. 4,800. Okay. That's like one extra train load for the coal. Two train loads of coal. You know what? That's fine. Just two train loads of each. No need to get too worried about it. Or rather, I could set it to... One train load plus 5k for each. Two hundred, hundred... Plus 5,000. I think that's a bit better. And... 1.2k fluid. Uh, times 60 seconds is 72,000. So 60,000 plus 72,000. 
Wait, what? He has 132,000. All right. Should be more than enough if I say like 140k. Cool, cool, cool. As long as they don't get in each other's way. 1.25 lanes of coal, assuming 25% empty lane is still better than 1.0 lanes. Indeed. Isn't fewer? Yes, yes, yes. Alright, I think I've set this up now. Why did that stop? Oh, because the input stopped. That's a pretty good reason. That actually looks decent. I could see myself moving this over a tile. It's fine. And that's correct. And that's correct. And that's our... Whoops. That is our blueprint. Scrubbers. 86251. And train stop names. Cool, cool, cool. I haven't put down any concrete in a while. Alright. Um... Where, oh where, should we put scrubbers? It needs a lot of vitalic acid. Which, for some reason, is getting no vitamelange extract. 25,000 with a stack size of 200. Should, I think we just did this. It should definitely be getting delivered. I'm thinking... It's all getting taken to space. Because... Because the vanilla train waiting to take extract is going to react to the nanosecond that train limit becomes not zero. So LTN doesn't even get to schedule it. We do have Vitamelange Extract saturated though. And this one's actually waiting with the train load. So unless I've made a mistake with the LTN settings here. Request stack threshold 100. It's switched on. Negative 25,000 Vitamelange extract. No, well, it should, uh, it should work. Probably the next time we get a train load. Um, I think we might have a problem. Here we have... One thousand. Fifteen. Unknown entity... Hold up. Why are you trying to go to Hagen Orbit if your destination is very obviously Exorion Orbit? That's the only one with moon orbit between a thousand and eleven hundred. Remind yourself that overconfidence. It's not overconfidence. Is killer. So we still have the same bug here. We just fixed it. How could it happen? Unless there's an entire other. Okay, okay, but, like... Target is still Hagen Orbit. But it seems to have the correct destination on the memory cell. Which means it should have got the correct destination on the console. Hmm. 
Hmm. And I still have no idea how or why we're occasionally launching... Well, I have one theory. Why we're sometimes launching with bots and only a few core fragments. Hmm. It couldn't have launched early from Exorion Orbit, could it? I don't think that's why this is happening, but it's something I haven't considered yet. Let's step through the logic here. Uh, as soon as the ship arrives, reset memory cell. And then one tick later send through the adjustment to the target clamp. So if it came from here, it definitely... No. If it came from Exorion Orbit, it definitely shouldn't have this on... Uh, this on the memory cell. I'm pretty sure this is from when it's popped into orbit. Oh, this is the empty one. Uh, what? Oh, hey, you're trying to go to Exarion orbit. What? I think I clicked the wrong ship. I'm pretty sure this popped into orbit from Hagen orbit while it was um, unloading. Barrel core fragments. But why? Where's our barrel core fragment drop off? It shouldn't even be possible for it to launch while the bots are still floating. Wait, what? Oh, that's the wrong... I was looking at the wrong combinator. Took too long to load? No. So here's the logic, right? Number one. A core fragment barrel has to equal zero in the robot network. That means everything in the ship. The robots, unfortunately, and there's no way to change this, report a negative number when they're moving stuff around, which is really, really frustrating. And I've never come up with... A single use case where that where I might want to use that um, but let's suppose that the ship is almost empty and because bots are like moving core fragments around uh, it evens out to exactly zero barrel core fragments right what else has to happen all logistic bots have to be available that means they have to be in the robots, uh, roboports. That means not floating here. And the other conditions are there's enough water, there's enough ion stream. So all four of those have to be true before A, we report that the ship is ready, and B, start the countdown timer when we receive a destination. It shouldn't even be able to report that the ship is ready. Like, it shouldn't be able to receive a destination until the ship is empty. So there's no way bots should still be moving. You could multiply the ship's content by a large number that ensures it can't be zero by chance. That's... That doesn't work because we're looking for zero so the requester chests don't count we're reading from the robot network asking it how many barrel core fragments there are when that number equals zero then and only then we give one of four green signals 
to say ship's ready. But bots have to have stopped moving, and we've checked this before. If there's a bot hovering like this, it doesn't give a green signal, even if it's not moving anywhere. Is doing the same to manage resource multiplied by 10 million? Uh, zero multiplied by anything, though. That's the problem. And we have to use requester chests to take from buffer chests. So... Ship has to be empty, bots have, st bots have to have stopped moving, there has to be enough water and enough ion stream. Then, and only then, we report that this ship is ready. And then, and only then, whatever's on this memory cell can get sent through to uh, this drop-off slash dispatcher. So the ship should already have zero core fragments in it before it gets a destination. And that's even if we account for, like, you know, a little bit of lag time. Like, okay. I don't know how you would get these two active at the same time if the bots are still moving. Uh, the more I think about it, the less sense it makes. So, ship is ready. This is usually empty. Bots have stopped moving. We've got this stuff. And then we get a destination given to us, and how many space elevator cables and stuff to load. Then the bots move stuff around, including loading the space elevator cables, which does happen when we get this bug, which we can't see right now. Um... Unless... Nope, that one's fine. Could solve the bot hovering problem, make the 2x2 two two chests standard chests, and only have the chest at the start of the chain requester chests. Uh, no, I don't think that would help. The bot's hovering isn't a problem. Like this, this right here, this isn't a problem. Because the ship isn't empty of core fragments if this is happening. So when we consume more inner side cave core fragments, this will empty and then eventually we'll get our all bots have gone home signal. That's not an issue. It's not like the ship is landing and then, like, instantly taking off, because it would have way more core fragments left inside it. Didn't have the full context? No worries. Maybe the roboport is, like... No. Even if the roboport was, like, not reporting properly for a second or two after the ship landed, we still wouldn't have one, two, three, four green signals. If x equals y, zero and zero, well that's not going to happen, but imagine that, green signal, false positive. If core fragment imicite cave... I mean, if this thing reported all zeros, we'd get a couple of pulse, uh, false positives from these two. But it would have to do it for a while. I also don't understand how... The ship that was bugged just now... This one's not bugged. 
I should keep one that's bugged so we can keep looking at it. The ship that was just bugged had what looked like the correct destination, Exorian Orbit, on its memory cell. And yet it didn't have the destination on its console. How does that happen? I know the spaceship console only updates once per second, but it should be here for a lot longer than a second. Once we get the destination in the memory cell, it takes like uh, one, two, two or three ticks for that destination information to go to memory cell and that's a pulse and then one two like two ticks for it to go to the spaceship console and that's transmitting constantly No. I was going to say, if, if this information arrived right after this got reset, it might explain a lot. Or would it? Or right before it got reset? No, that wouldn't work. If it was on the memory cell already when the ship got here, which wouldn't happen... And then that reset, and then, well, it would still, it would, it, it would be a less than a second window. Okay. I don't think it's possible, but let's suppose there was a ship here getting ready to launch and there was nothing on this memory so I'm pretty sure that's not true. Because the bugged ship does have space elevator cable. And that comes from here. Well, that just means the pulse to the memory cell works, which we know. But if the pulse to the memory cell happened somehow right before this was reset and this was blank and then we pass all of that through which is nothing and then we launch that still doesn't explain it because how do we get the ship not fully unloaded and the bots hovering over the ship Even if that did happen. I'm trying to produce water from oil on a planet with no water. So an oil core fragment planet, but no, but waterless. Is this a good way to get water, or you guys just send water barreled? Uh, is it possible? Crude oil core fragment. Uh, I need a pulverizer. That gives us regular core fragments, which does give us water. Is it enough, though? I'd be shocked if it's enough, depending on how you want to process the oil. 16... Okay, a little bit less than one water per core fragment, and we get, like, a fifth. Less than a fifth. We get, like, a tenth. So, so about one water per coal core fragment, if we ignore prod modules. That doesn't sound like enough. Send ship with water tanks? Yeah, I'd send ice. Filtration, heavy oil, that gives water and coal. 
I think we did that. And I totally forgot about it because it was ages ago. Uh, coal liquefaction gives us steam. Oh, coke liquefaction. Well, we're not getting coal, are we? Uh, I think I'm looking at the wrong machine. Infiltration building. Heavy oil makes coal and water. Yeah, that is a really, really useful recipe. It's carried us on Hagen, like, really good fit when we were so short on coal and petroleum. Well, not so much petroleum. Um... Wait. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. It's crude oil. So we get 80 crude oil, barely any core fragments, and one stone. And then... If you have 10 water, somehow, 100 crude, becomes 70 heavy, and 70 heavy becomes 30 something water. Uh, that sounds like a positive loop. If my math is not totally incorrect. Interesting. Very interesting. I just haven't had the the occasion for it. Alright, back to the nightmare of spaceships and rare bugs. Would you be able to infinitely cycle this with prod modules? Um, I think so. You can't prod this. So you're getting exactly half water from your heavy oil. You can prod this, which means, let's say you have prod threes. You're going to get, for 10 water, you, you can consider the crude oil infinite, right? For 10 water, you're going to get seven times as much heavy oil times 1.24. You're going to get 8.68 times as much heavy as the water that you put in. And then you're going to get half the water for the heavy. So divided by two. 4.34 times as much water out as water in. Yeah, it is a very positive loop. You could absolutely do that. Nice. Does this happen to be a borderless planet? Sadly, no. All right. Next time we get that bug, um, we're going to have to... Yeah, we're going to have to wait for that bug to happen again. Next time we get that bug, we're going to have to, like, write down everything about it. Because I really don't want to, like, clear it up and then... Strain to remember how things looked again. But I'm pretty sure it had the memory cell correct. And it had... It had the space elevator cables. I know that. Which means... It happened a few seconds... After... Mer Marilyn Fry? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That would mean it happened a few seconds after it received its mission. And it shouldn't be receiving its mission until it's empty. This is maddening. This is absolutely maddening. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I have a guess. I have a wild guess. 
We're emptying the ship. It doesn't quite get emptied. All the bots stop moving, not like this. Nope, that doesn't work. Because it wouldn't report zero. Are we getting another green signal somehow that we shouldn't be? No, I don't think so. Wait, 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 wait. Nope, this memory cell is specifically spaceship launch. So it's not going to like double the green or something. This thing only works when we get antimatter stream. It does output green signal twice. Hmm. Is there anything else we could check to make sure that the ship has actually been unloaded? I don't think so. Core fragments detected in robot network, which is to say here, a zero. Bots have stopped moving. Hmm. I could get really keen and check that, like, core fragments up here are empty. And that tells us for a fact that if there are zero core fragments in there and these conditions have been met, it's even less possible, even by some bug. Even even from the... I keep going this over this over and over again. It shouldn't be possible to get x equals y if there's a hovering bot like this. Even if we accidentally get core fragment equals zero. By coincidence. I wish I could see it happen. Do I need to just like watch ships launch a hundred times? Even if I do see it happen, it's going to be very difficult to recognize how it happened. I would think. At this point, I'm sending rocket only. I mean, I just started a week ago. <laughs> Uh, spaceships don't have to be this complicated. I went hard mode to be fancy. This one worked. Oh, there's a few core fragments left. And it worked. I'm, I'm kind of, you can tell I'm kind of disappointed that it worked. Oh. Logi bots were still queuing up to charge and X was equal to Y. But we've only got 50 Logibots and we've got four Roboports, so... Wait, what? Oh, that's a construction bot. That is... a construction bot. Hmm. Oh, whoops, was my mute backward? Damsel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Might want to use the superchargers. Now, we've only got 50 bots. And we've got, like, all of these roboports. And they're far away from the ship. 
And we know that when there's too many... Um... Oh, they're finished. Okay, let's give them some more work to do. Um, I actually want to whitelist, or rather blacklist, decon power stuff. How about this? Uh, solar panels. You know what, we can pick up the old solar panels. I changed my mind. Yeah, we don't need to change that. Okay. And... Oh, don't pick up RoboPorts either. For the moment. RoboPort, RoboPort, Robo... Oh. Oh, you can specify. Don't pick up RoboPorts that are in X, Y, or Z mode. Alright, so we should be able to do this. I hope. And I'll just change that back to how it was. How's it going? When I popped in earlier, we were fixing spaceships. We are unfortunately still fixing spaceships. I mean, I updated it to the new system, and it works great, asterisk. We still have that rare bug, though. So basically, occasionally we find a ship in Hagen orbit, with its destination still set to Hagen orbit, which has a few core fragments left inside it, and it's kidnapped some bots that were carrying core fragments, and it's carrying space elevator cable, which means it should have got its mission on the memory cell here. And I... No, the more I think about it, the more there's, like, just so many safeguards in place where that shouldn't be able to happen. And I can't even come up with a theory on how it happens. Rip space elevator? Tether broken? Oh, for fuck's sake. How? Why is Iron Hauler 3 not landing here? Because it somehow came here with... With this on the memory cell. What? Even then, it probably should have sent another ship here. It's so close, I think I'll set this to, like, two minutes or something. Or even one minute. Uh, two minutes. We can send a ship here every two minutes if we want to. How did this happen? Wait, are we short on spellevator cables? Uh-oh. No, we're not short. We're just making more. And also, there's no substation pylon over here for some reason. Alright, let's fix that real quick. Bye-bye spaghetti research? Fond memories? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, the reason I was looking here was to say, look, even when the bots do have to wait to charge, they halo around a RoboPort. Um, which means, A, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of room for the bots not to get kidnapped if they're queuing to get recharged. And B, even if they did, we'd see them in very specific spots, not like dotted around across here. Base is huge now, I love it, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would literally have to, like, just watch ships launch over and over for hours. 
to try and catch a glimpse of how that bug happens. And then even... Even if I was staring at it, I might miss it. So hope... Did I set verb T up correctly to, like, request? I did. 25. We got rid of this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At timer 25. Oh. Did that actually happen? We've got... We're not consuming... We're not consuming Holmanite core fragments often enough to trigger a space elevator cable delivery? Oh no. Hmm. You know, I really didn't think that would actually be a problem. How, let's look at our consumption of Fulminite core fragments. We haven't consumed Holmanite core fragments for almost 10 hours? How? How is that possible? Holmanite. It's saturated. Um... Holmanite is actually... Busted? No? Wait. Wait, what? Oh no, please don't tell me it's because Holmanite's been busted this whole time. Oh no. Actually, in a way that would be better. Holmanite ingot. I'm shocked that we didn't, like, discover this sooner. We made Holmanite ingots less than an hour ago. Uh, and that's the only Holmium ingots we've made for a while. What the hell? The resource consumption in point six is, is strange. Somehow I constantly run into the problem of having too much rare metals while not having mined a single one, indeed. How did this happen? There's no beads. We've got tons of beads here. Provide stack threshold 100. That's connected. Don't tell me there's like a train nearby and the signals are wrong. And that's... No, I don't think so. Wait. You're joking. No, this is full. I thought the loader was set up incorrectly. Provide stack threshold, 100. Many beads. 30,000. Request stack threshold, 100. Oh no. Oh no, no. Did this get imbalanced? Is that why? It, it shouldn't be a problem, should it? There's tons of beads here. We're having trouble outputting dirty holmium water. There's no beads here. Yeah, 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 I think I see the problem. Oh god. Oh no. Uh, one little mistake. That can be all it takes. And if I didn't leave this here to put the beads back to good use, ironically it wouldn't have happened. You know what? I'm considering... Just to make sure the balancing isn't going to be an issue, send this over to here. Ex 
except that doesn't line up very well. And we would need the opposite side for these two. I could just swap those filters around. How about like this? Oh, that looks relatively neat. And then swap these two. I've got like four core miners and they are stopped at least 50% of the time because rare metals are full. Considering making landfill out of them. Yeah, you will need to trash something. Where's our train? I think I put it too far up here. Also, what's this? Oh, right, I was going to put a... a thing there. Okay. So instead of putting something here to temporarily fix this, we're just going to make it so that all beads can end up finding their way over here. Is that going to cause a problem where we don't end up having any on the left? I guess... eventually? How much does this consume? Oh, the whole thing, actually. Uh, net 49 beads per second, so more than a half belt. Maybe I should just have it put beads back in here as well. Might actually end up doing that. Last I checked, my landfill chests were getting full. <laughs> Indeed. So I think this is the reason that we haven't had any spell elevator cables delivered to Burb Tea. I could have sworn I've seen ships going to Verb Tea not long ago, though. It doesn't go through the spell elevator cables that fast. Okay, do we have bug? We have bug. Okay, so... I'm gonna write this down. Hovering bots, right side, cables, a uh, small amount of four fragments left in almost every chest. Um, destination, Hagen Orbit, we know that. Memory cell, once again, looks correct. Destination um, is Exorion Orbit. The fact that it has a time signal of 15. It's definitely not been doubled or something. And I think that's everything that we have to note here, right? I wish we could see a replay of when this thing launched. Uh, and it's trying to land... It, it says SE space pipe long f is in the way because it doesn't have um, anchor to target left clamp signal on the memory cell, so it's trying to ta uh, land at target 1. Which is way up here, I think it is. It's probably that long straight pipe 15. Let's try to land there. Uh, and what was it? Barrel core fragments? We've seen it happen with different core fragments.
So I'm, I don't think there's anything unique about some of our launches. And then bots would have been delivered from here. Let me put them back into the system. This side is empty first. I don't think that gives us any information that helps. And I certainly don't think we're going to find anything looking at this now. The moment the ship launches... How long does it take to reset this memory cell? Um, it would happen all the time if this is the problem, though. But I think it's like two or three ticks. We stop receiving S signal. We stop sending green signal. Red greater than green is true. Reset. So like two ticks? Reset that, we stop this going through here, we stop this going through here. Let's count the combinators. One, two, th three, four, five. If somehow five ticks, or whatever it is, were long enough, that sometimes a ship takes up, uh, takes off from here, and then another ship comes in, and it immediately receives a launch signal. <sighs> that wouldn't explain how it's got something on its memory cell, but let's pretend. Uh, it re immediately receives some uh, launch signal because this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ticks hasn't propagated through yet so we still have our counter sending spaceship launch signal i'm pretty sure one second or barely more than one second isn't long enough for the robots to empty almost the entire ship i Fairly sure of that. Hmm. I need a ship to come back. I need to see just how quickly it unloads. We need one with destination Hagen orbit. We've got a million ships queuing up at Exorion orbit. Why? I'm pretty sure I set it so that Exorion can only request once every five minutes. And it's supposed to have more than 9,000 barrel core fragments before it requests. But well, that's handled on the... on Central's end. If anything greater than 9k output everything input count, uh, the only thing that's going to be greater than 9k is the count of core fragments of whichever type. We're still trying to send to Exorion right now. Uh, how many core fragments do we have here? 5.6k. If red signal equals zero, when are we getting a red signal? Oh, I see. Don't send when there's when there's a ship here. There's 5.6k core fragments here. I'm pretty sure there shouldn't be anything on this memory cell. That's for Exorian orbit anyway. Every time lately I check, 
There's a ship aimed at Ixorion orbit. How many are set? I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wasn't this one at home? Oh, that's at Ixorion. No, oh, that's at Hagen orbit. Wait, what? Why did it say Delta V 4761? Close to... Oh no, that's at Exorion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. We've got basically all of our ships at Exorion orbit right now. That might be a problem. Uh, that might be a really big problem. Okay, just just go to Hagen orbit. It's going to be a bit of a waste of fuel, but it's going to be easier than taking them all individually and anchoring them manually because they automatically get their new anchor target here. Maybe they can 3D... What are the major benefits of using spaceships over rockets? No cargo rocket sections, no crashed ships. Uh, way fewer logistic headaches with that stuff. No bits breaking off all the time. Way, 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 way less production for fuel. What you have to understand is what you're seeing here is hard mode. Less fuel? Yeah, liquid rocket fuel, it's a lot, especially to go interstellar. Especially compared to iron or, um, Hugh Hang, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Let me just check on Central Dispatch. Oh, it's still waiting to send someone through Foenestra. Okay. Oh, was that one launching? I think I missed it. I think I missed it. Hmm. If it takes like a second, because it's doing the structural integrity check, like one or two seconds. And on a specific tick each second, it receives the launch signal. And it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ticks for it to propagate through here to stop sending the launch signal. I guess it's possible in rare circumstances for it to launch like up to two or three seconds right after it lands. Right? Are there any more here? There there are. Let's send you home. I think it's time to convert my janky world to a more rail-based town philosophy. Escape the spaghetti. Spaghetti just doesn't scale very well. Such a huge undertaking, but it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more ships do we have here? Oh god, at least two more. Three more, I think, in orbit. So much for this system being simpler. Is that it? Oh my god, there's more. There's so many. 
Uh, I kind of want to see how this one works out. This ship will deliver supplies within a solar system, water for power. Oh, thanks, Veltek. Oh, that is a big one. Uh, looks like we're waiting our turn to drop off barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, this is perfect. This is perfect. We've got several ships coming in. Uh, all of which are going to be queuing at the same spot. Like, they're going to want to land at the same spot. So, if, if that bug looks anything like I've been imagining, uh, we might see it quite soon. Where are you going? Foenestra. Oh, you're actually supposed to go to Foenestra? That's fine. Okay, I thought he was, like, going there from Exorion Orbit. Where are you going? Also phone Astra. Did we get someone sent to Verb T yet? Nope. Verb T is busted. So what do we have here? You look empty. You look ready to launch. Oh, it is ready to launch. This thing stops outputting the launch signal the nanosecond the ship has left. Wait, wait, wait. No, I need to see... Okay. This is it. This is our chance. Don't tell me we've already got another bugged one. Or I didn't fix this one yet, maybe. Okay. So... We got a lot of ships that want to land here, whether they've got core fragments or not. And we should have a lot of missions to send our ships on right now. The moment that it reports ready, which will be when we have enough fuel, we should see something appear on the memory cell. That's another way it should be impossible for it to launch again so quickly. Okay, so we're going somewhere via Foenestra. We've already got the space elevator cables, so it's just launching. And? No instant launch. I don't think that's what's happening, because when the bug happens, there's something on the, uh, the memory cell. Also, every time the bug happens... I was going to say, also, every time the bug happens, there's bots and core fragments, but... I think we saw a couple of empty ones before. Right before we patched them, right? I don't think... The instant launch theory carries any weight. Why is this one not... Oh, right. I forgot. The ship is too small. We're only pumping through one pump. I wonder if it's taking a little while. All right. Go get core fragments via Foenestra, and I should have moused over this. The fact that the bots don't have anything to do in this case doesn't really help us with um, trying to witness what's going wrong. Wow. Accumulators pulled some power. Probably from the Spellvader spiking. That's why we have them.
It seems like every single ship is getting sent to the same destination again. Even though it should be like... Oh. I was going to say it should be kind of pseudo-random. But actually... They're going to be prioritized. We've got like... I think the highest one is tick 30, or tick 25. Tick 30. If we're sending a signal to request a ship on tick 30, but the central timer goes all the way up to 60, that's not that much higher, but still. Wouldn't that mean, like the higher this gets, wouldn't that mean we're kind of prioritizing the ones that come first? Because the memory cell... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The memory cell hold, holds on to the first one it hears about. So out of all of the outposts that are requesting at the same time, we're going to send ships to each of them in the same order. Shouldn't we not be sending any more ships than one, though? For five minutes? To the same outpost? Wait, 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 what? Oh, no. Items carried by robots don't count in the network, makes some things kind of tricky. Uh, it can be worse than that. When they're moving stuff around, they report negative numbers. Or maybe it's... I think it reports negative numbers sometimes Remind when the bots are on the way to pick something up. And insidious killer. Yes, indeed. Where are we going to send you? Isn't there only one destination we've got so far through Fo and Estra? Wait, wait, wait. How many core fragments do we have of each type? This one's pretty empty. This one's empty. Uh, Holmanite is full as hell. Okay. Um, this one's pretty empty, and this one's full. Okay, so we have options for where to send our ships right now. But every single one of them is getting sent to the outpost where they have to go through Fo and Estra. I'm pretty sure there's only one outpost like that so far. Spiriso. So didn't we set it up so that Planet Orbit 816. Oh. No? Wait, wait, wait. I think I set this up wrong. So we reset the timer. Back at Central, this is the destination we've got right now. Planet Orbit 816. Because that is true, the timer is not running. Because the timer is not running, T is not greater than zero, which it would be five minutes later. Because T is not greater than zero, we're outputting nothing here. So we're not outputting the time signal. Because time is not equal to 30, we're not outputting any of this to central dispatch. So how the hell does Central Dispatch keep receiving Planet Orbit 816? Answer me that. Oh, it's on the green wire. Where is it coming from? Wait, wait, wait. Did I just put the wrong color wire here? Is that why all of our ships are going to the wrong place. Where would we even be getting... Central Dispatch Green Wire. Oh no. Is that what I think it is? Central Dispatch. No, the only thing this sends is R for reset. 
If we keep resetting central... No, that's right. Green wire. After reset, go to central dispatch. Central dispatch. Green wire. The after reset does go here. But I don't know if that would actually cause a problem. On the red wire, that's the time shared send to central signal. If we've got greater than 9k of something, send everything through. And that has to be the number of core fragments. Is this Spiriso orbit? Yes, it is. And that's on the red wire. Yeah, that's right. Now what? Now we seem to have it doubled on the memory cell back at home. Uh, you're joking. Fred equals zero. Not put everything. Now for reset. Anything greater than zero output red, if red equals zero output. Anything... What just happened? What just happened? Also, how was this resetting? If, if the reset signal goes to here, it's only going to output the reset to hear if red equals zero. So did this just never reset? Is that why we were sending ships to the same outpost every time? Because it didn't, it's not an error in requesting with the new system here. Okay, let's say this is actually correct. Yeah, 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 it's working right now. It's saying, don't send, don't request another ship for five minutes. Or two and a half minutes left or something. That seems to actually be working now. So was it just the one wire in the wrong place? If this was never getting reset, then we would just keep sending ships to the same outpost. Which seems to be what happened. Which is happening right now, because we sent like seven ships to Spiriso. Uh, when are they, they going to get there? Because I kind of want to see the outcome. Heading for Foenestra. We're almost at Foenestra. And then... Head to Spiriso orbit. The moment that we get to Foenestra. That looks correct. I hope we're not going to get any ships trapped at Foenestra. That maybe have a planet orbit destination signal that doesn't make sense. I don't think we launched any in that time, but I'd better check now rather than later. Good thing Spiriso is kind of fast with its core fragments. And it hasn't received any for a minute. And I think it's for a type of core fragment that we burn through pretty quickly. Otherwise, it might take a really 
really long time for our ships to get sorted out. Where's this? Stormhurst Orbit. That actually... Why aren't you landing? Anchor using... This is wrong. You shouldn't have an anchor using signal. Your destination is supposed to be Hagen Orbit. Or... or not. How did you get here with... <sighs> that should probably sort itself out. That looks fine. And that looks fine. Alright, I'm pretty sure we didn't give any invalid destinations on the memory cells. Um, Ixorion? Looks okay for now. I'm glad we don't have to patch these again. And... So yeah, that reset goes in the green signal. It resets both this local memory cell and central dispatcher's memory cell. And that green goes straight to here. Cool, cool, cool. I love this physical code debugging. It's challenging. Alright. Anchor here again, please. Well, I don't think the bug that we just discovered um, is going to have anything to do with this bug, where the ships sometimes end up in Hagen orbit with destination Hagen orbit and they still have some bots and four fragments. I'm getting this close to like putting an arbitrary timer so that a ship can't launch for like a minute or something but even that might not fix it because we've got, you know, eventually things saturate and the ship stays here until it's empty of core fragments. I really wish we could change... wait, let me check real quick. I'm pretty sure we can't change the anchor ID of these dynamically still, right? I think someone told me what this bottom one was for. Um, it's probably for reading the ID, right? I want the exact opposite of that. I want to set the ID. Yeah. I don't suppose red would set and green would read. That would be way too convenient. Um... Output signals, right clamp. Seven? Nope. I'm pretty sure you can't dynamically set these. And I don't think there's a way to dynamically turn them off and on. It would be very convenient if I could deny spaceships from landing until there's room for this to empty, uh, for the ship to empty. I mean, normally I wouldn't even worry about that, but like, this is a variable in why the hell does this rare bug keep happening? Don't know if you can do anything else than disable it with a red signal. You can disable it with red signal? Wait, wait, that's what I'm looking for. <gasps> okay. And enable with green, right? No? What? How do I re-enable it? Uh, 
Uh, negative red signal? Hold on. Enabled? Constant combinator? I didn't just imagine that, right? It's on, it's working. Give it a red signal. No, it's working. What? Did I imagine that? Did I, like, click it off and forget that I clicked it off? Or something? Am I being told fibs? It tells you in the docs? Yeah, I've read the docs. I'm pretty sure I don't remember... Anything about being able to disable the clamps. Anchor using... Must that match that of the clamp ship. Anchor 2 signal must match the value of the clamp at the destination. You can see and change these values and clamps by opening a clamps UI. If a match is found for both anchor using anchor 2 signals given... The ship will try to land... With the two clamps connected, use with caution, indeed. To set the ID of a clamp, open the GUI. You never need to change the type of a signal, of a clamp signal. You can disable an anchored clamp by passing it a red signal. Uh, can we, though? doesn't seem to work. Did I imagine it, or did I actually make it work the first time? You can disable an anchored clamp by passing it a red signal. Wiki even says to use the bottom connector, but not Y. Well, the top one is a pass-through, so that doesn't surprise me too much, but... Red signal. It's still on and working. Oh, what about power off? No, that's Crest Oreo. I don't think it's going to use the Crest Oreo signals. Don't know if it shows on the clamp if it's disabled, but I have used that feature. Well, it says disabled if I turn it off uh, manually, but I guess there's one way to test it. What inbound ships do we have right now? Hmm. Okay, this one's trying to land at clamp ID 13. I'm going to give it a place to land. And we're going to... Good thing that was set to 3. We're going to give it a red signal. We're going to set this to... What was it? 13? 12 plus 1? Yes. Uh, give it the red signal first. And set this to 13. And then if I turn this off, the ship should land, right? Okay, if we disable it, does that prevent the clamp pass-through? I'm very curious to know. We'll set this to R for reset for the memory cell. On the red wire. Uh, it did go through while the clamp was supposed to be disabled. So it doesn't stop the pass-through. I could have just moused over this to check, actually. Um, but yeah, no, that's really good to know. So, it might... And I really emphasis might... Um, 
help us to avoid this problem? So if we... Oh, that's easy. That's easy. We're just gonna... get the volume of maximum core fragments in our more modern ship design. Uh, could I, like, paste it here, even though we're not going to use it? Is that okay? Where are we? I want to check the capacity of the later game ship. I just need that constant combinator. Nothing else. It is 70... 77,000... Let's just call it 80k. Alright. So, if we... Subtract... The maximum that we can store... 80k minus... Uh, 80k from the maximum we can store in these... Uh, is that only 1.9k? That can't be right, can it? It might, actually. Each of these only represents two chests. There's a lot of storage in here as well. I could even say something like, ship can't land unless all of these are empty. That might be the best way to go about it. Let me just double check. Um, 23 times 96 times 20 is 44,160. And this monstrosity has a storage of almost 80k. Got a test to be sure? Indeed. Add one to the anchor? Doesn't disable the anchor, adds one to the anchor. Um, I don't... No, that's not right. I would think it would just set the anchor signal if that were the case. Well, we can try it. Set this to 12. And include the red signal. Launch this guy. And then disable this. Yeah, he's not landing. Oh. Hold up. Where's our ship? Iron Hall and Nine. Oh, it doesn't have the target ID right now. Its target is one. Um, alright, change this to one. Wait, if I... Can I change this to zero? I doubt it. Oh, I can. Yeah, it's not adding one. It's, um... It's... It's disabling it. Huh? What? Why is it still trying to land in the same spot? It's saying long pipe is in the way. What? Did I... Oh. No? This is ID 1. Huh? Why is it insisting on landing here now? I think we'd better just bring it in. Uh, and I'm realizing it's going to be ages before I can land it where I want to. Uh, might just have to... Mm. Anchor to target left clamp 14. Huh? Oh no, I sent it to the wrong one. No, 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 no. Oh no. 
Well, we're going to have some purple core fragments in the mall. That's one way to solve the problem. Indeed. That's only as much of a headache, if not less, than what I was thinking of doing. Where are our ships right now? They're still... Oh, they're on their way out. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so we're going to have a lot of ships coming back with barrel core fragments. At the same time. And barrel core fragments are pretty much empty. What was I doing? Why was I flying over here? As good a question as any. Oh yeah, I wanted to... Here's what we're going to test tomorrow. We're going to put a decider combinator here. And we're going to say... We're going to connect it to this. And we're going to say if there are any... Any core fragments. If there is anything detected on this green wire. That way we can make it generic and copy paste. Output one red signal. Research still not going? No, I don't think so. Um, oh, I don't think we have bio scrubbers. I mean, we have them downstairs. Or oh, did I design it but not build it? I designed it, but didn't build it. We need bio scrubbers. I'm going to put a reminder. And this thing can go back home. Um, yeah, we're going to say... If there are any core fragments left in the blue chests... Red signal to the spaceship clamp... Um, and we're not going to let the ship land. Because we want it to empty quickly, or at least as quickly as possible. This thing can store 18k. The blue chests can store 20 times 23 times... 96. 44,000. So that means we can completely empty at least the small ships if we wait for these blue chests to be empty. How did you set the clamp ID on the ship back to one? Uh, I basically just edited this constant combinator right here. It's the target left clamp. This one didn't change. All right. That's going to have to do it for today. Tomorrow, more experiments and wondering why the hell that one bug ever happens. Unless, somehow, A, this idea works, and B, making sure we empty the ships quickly every time prevents that relaunch bug. We can hope. Dehose, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, let's find someone to raid. And I think we raided. Wait, who did we raid yesterday? It was Rain, wasn't it? It wasn't Hofnix. Let's raid a Hofnix. Fantastic. It was rain, yes. Alright. Thank you all for watching. I did save it, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. Rain, welcome. And until next time, stay safe.
Take care, guys. Wait. Oh, I didn't raid? God damn it. <laughs> One job. Take care of Veldak, Evil Plan, Night Dancer, and Rain. And everyone else as well. You already have Raid in progress. Why can't I see... What the hell is this? View all. It was hiding it. Okay. Raiding in five seconds. Cool, cool, cool. Take care, Tiny Goliath.